Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Naruto awakens bloodline, which will change his life part 1 before I start, please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2, do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends, and check out the description as well, let's start the video. 8 years after the attack of the Kaiubi. It was a bright and sunny Sunday afternoon in Kanahagakur. It was quite hot this time of day as well, but that wasn't such a surprise, considering that Kanoha is in high no kuni. The birds were chirping and a warm breeze could be felt. The villagers were busy going about their business. Standing atop Hokage Tower was Hirazan Siratobi, who was the current Hokage. He was looking at his village when a sad smile crept on his face. Lenado, thank you for saving our village if only I could have helped to prevent such a sacrifice. If only people would have honored your last wish. He thought. He didn't have much time to think about the past when he heard someone steps behind him. When he turned around, he saw his secretary, Yumi. She was an attractive woman in her mid-twenties. She had shoulder-length brown hair which she kept in a ponytail, and she also had narrow dark purple eyes. She wore a white sleeveless blouse, navy skirt which went to her knees, and pair of simple civilian boots. Okajama, Iruka-san requests an audience with you. She said. Hiruzen looked at the village for one last time and sighed send him to my office and tell him I will be there in five minutes. Very well, Hokage-sama. She replied respectfully, bowed, and left. I wonder what he wants. It's very rare that he comes to see me. The old Hokage thought and after a minute, left. Hokage's office. Hello Aruka, welcome the old Hokage so, tell me, why did you want to see me? Well, um I wanted you to sign this. Aruka stuttered, then gave the Hokage a sheet of paper. When the Hokage read through everything, he raised an eyebrow. Field trip, huh? Why so sudden? The old Hokage asked. To be honest, he was quite surprised because he didn't expect the first year academy students to go outside of the village. Usually this kind of field trip only happened in the third or fourth year. I decided to do it this year because my class is quite promising. We will be alright. Mizuki will help me watch the kids. And it's not like it will happen tomorrow, I plan to do it after three weeks so I can prepare them. Hiruka replied calmly. He really believed that his students were the most promising and gifted students in all academy history after the Yandame. The old Hokage thought about it for a while. Very well then, I'll sign this form and allow you to take kids on a field trip. In three days time I'll inform the guards about this. Haruka smiled and thanked the old man thank you. I shall go now and inform the kids. Haruka bowed and walked slowly towards the doors. Before Haruka could exit the office, the Hokage asked, tell me, Haruka, how is Naruto? Naruto? Well, Naruto is being Naruto doing pranks, being a loud mouth and missing classes. His grades are not high as well. Hiruka stopped for a second and thought about something. But I feel that he is hiding something, like he is acting or at some kind of facade. What do you mean? The Hokage asked curiously. Well, sometimes during lessons when I ask him a question, I can see in his eyes that he knows the correct answer, but for some reason he gives me an incorrect one instead. Also, in sparring matches I can see that he has good tojutsu stances, but he never shows how good he is for some unknown reason. If he keeps this up, he will be the dead last. It's still the first year, though. Iruka replied with a sad expression. He knew that Naruto didn't have any family and that he lived alone. That's why Iruka befriended Naruto and acted like an older brother figure to him, but he never helped him in any academy subjects because it would look like favoritism. But it was not like Naruto ever asked anyone to help him. The academy teacher knew what his students were capable of, and Naruto was capable enough to get good grades. Have you talked to him about that? Maybe if you talk to him, he won't act like that and will actually try anyway, thanks for telling me this. You may go now. The old Hokage replied with a kind smile. Hi, Hokage-sama the teacher answered and left the room. Hiruzen looked out the window for a minute and then returned to the nightmare of all Cage's paperwork. One thought slipped through his mind, be safe. Next day in the academy. Iruka stood in front of the class, ready to announce the news about the field trip to everyone. He didn't have many students. There were some kids from shinobi clans and some civilian kids. Everyone was talented though, and everyone was ready to go on the field trip. At least, he thought so. Okay class, calm down and listen. Iruka called out, hoping everyone would listen. But that wasn't the case. It looked like no one even heard him. Shut up. Haruka shouted while he thought this happens every single day, the class went dead silent and turned their attention to the teacher. Ahem I talked to the Hokage yesterday and. He couldn't finish, because Naruto, who sat next to Sasuke, interrupted him, did he allow you to teach us some kind of cool jutsu? No once again he couldn't finish the sentence. Oh maybe he will take us on some cool mission. Naruto asked curiously. Shikamaru had enough of Naruto's shouting. Oi, Naruto. We're not even Jen and so no one will take us on any kind of mission. 
And we will not learn any jutsu until next year, because we haven't started to learn how to mold and use chakra. So calm down and listen what Aruka sensei wants to say and let me sleep. Jeez. Fine. But just because you don't know how to mold and use chakra doesn't mean everyone else here doesn't know how to. Naruto replied angrily. Shikamaru glanced at Naruto in curiosity, I'm sure that no one here knows how to use chakra, even for a simple bunshin. Maybe he meant that he can do that I doubted, though. After that, he decided not to bother himself with this topic. But he wasn't the only one who shared his thoughts. Ino, who had overheard Naruto's conversation with Shikamaru said, Naruto, I'm sure that no one here knows how to properly use chakra, even for simple bunshin. The academy starts teaching it in the second year, and those who are from a shinobi clan start learning it from their parents when they turn nine years old. So don't say such stupid things, Baka. DCH, whatever the blonde muttered. But Aruka knew better if Naruto said something like that than Naruto really meant it. And true to Aruka's thoughts, Naruto started to do tree climbing exercises in his free time. He could stand on a tree for an hour, but he kept improving. Weeks ago, Naruto snuck into the shinobi section of the library and read a scroll about chakra control. Well, that had been the first scroll he could get to before the librarian noticed him. The librarian, whose name was Akihiro, wasn't a bad person and didn't treat Naruto like other civilians, he had read books about fuinjutsu and knew some basics of the art of sealing. But still, he followed the rules and didn't allow civilians to go into the shinobi section, which was why he just asked Naruto to not ever go there until he become a ninja, or he, Akihiro, would have to watch Naruto's every step in library. Naruto didn't want to lose Akihiro's trust and apologized. Akihiro allowed Naruto to keep the chakra control exercise scroll with one condition to return it when Naruto mastered all the exercises. Seeing Naruto's joyful smile, the librarian smiled as well. Back to the classroom. Iruka decided not to think about Naruto at that particular moment. Instead he said, as I tried to say before, he then sternly looked at Naruto and continued, I talked to the Hokage yesterday, and he has given me permission to take you on a two-day field trip. Immediately he mentioned the word field trip everyone started shouting and discussing it with others. Well, not everyone was happy. Some random civilian girl, whose name was Aiko, started to protest Iwa, but there are those disgusting bugs, when Shino heard this, his eyebrows twitched. The girl didn't notice it and continued, and where will we sleep? And what about food? And where will we wash ourselves and? Naruto interrupted her boy, Aiko, shut up. Bugs are very useful allies in battle. He then looked at Shino, who was a bit surprised that Naruto defended him, and nodded to him in silent thanks. Then Naruto turned back to Aiko and you are soon to become ninja. When ninjas go out on missions, they will have to sleep outside in almost every mission and find food in the forest if they want to survive. Iruka nodded in agreement. Yes, Naruto has a point there. And it's not like you have to go. If you don't want to, no one will insist. Maybe he's not such an idiot like he acts troublesome Shikamaru thought. Maybe he will talk to Naruto later to find out for sure whether he is an idiot or not. He wasn't the only one with similar thoughts. So he isn't such an idiot like he wants everyone to believe. I knew something was not right about him. Sasuke thought, then looked at the shouting Naruto and smirked. Shut up. Haruka yelled and received attention from students there are still some things about this field trip you need to know. First, you have to ask your parents to sign this form if you want to go, he then gave everyone their forms and continued, you have until the end of this week to hand it in. Secondly, the field trip will be three weeks from today, on Wednesday, and we will be back on Thursday afternoon. So don't forget to take supplies for a two-day trip. Now, you are all dismissed for today. With this, everyone nodded and ran out from the classroom. It was not every day the instructor allowed them to go home early, so they didn't need to be told twice. But there was one person who didn't go with everyone else. One Naruto Uzumaki. He sat in his seat with a sad expression on his face. What's the matter, Naruto? Haruka asked with a small, warm smile. He already had an idea what was bothering the blonde student. Naruto looked at the teacher and said well, no one's waiting for me anyway, so I don't have to hurry. Besides he then looked back at the desk I don't have parents who can sign this form. Naruka saw how sad Naruto was, and he didn't like to see him like that. And he knew what could brighten Naruto's mood. Although he was sure his purse wouldn't like what he was going to do. Hum, Naruto. I will treat you to Ichiraku Raymond, and once your mood lifts, we can discuss what we can do about this form. Why why why? Raymond. Naruto shouted and ran out of class come on, Iruka sensei Iruka chuckled and watched with amusement and wondered how just a single bowl of Raymond can change Naruto's mood. Or two bowls or three or Okami. Later at Ichiraku Raymond's stand. As Naruto ate, he and Aruka had a light talk about various things. When Naruto finished his last bowl for today, which was the sixth, he turned to Aruka with some kind of sad expression. So, what about this form? 
I can't go with everyone, right? Well, that's not a problem. I can ask Hokage-sama to sign the form for you. I don't think he will mind. He will understand your situation. Haruka answered with a smile. Really? Oh man, Hokage Jiji is awesome. Naruto was very happy. The Hokage always took care of him when he could, and the Hokage was one of the first persons who acknowledged him. I will be become as cool a Hokage as the Sandame is, and I will surpass the Yandame. Believe it. Aruka sighed and just a while ago you were all sad and depressed. This Raymond is like a cure to you. That's quite a dream you have there, Naruto. Said Tucci, the stand owner, as he came out from the kitchen. Yeah. When I become stronger and become Hokage, everyone will acknowledge me. Naruto being Hokage is not just about being acknowledged, but about protecting the village and your loved ones with your life and making it better for everyone. And you can become even more powerful if you have precious people to protect. Iruka said. Really, he was amused by his dream. Naruto still had a lot of growing up to do if he wanted to accomplish this dream. Huh? Was all the answer Naruto could give to what Iruka said. Iruka sighed never mind you will understand it later. But if you want to be a Hokage, you must train really hard. If you continue to do pranks, skipping lessons and not paying attention in class, you won't get far in your ninja career. I know, Haruka sensei Naruto had a thoughtful expression. He then decided to ask is it true that no one my class can use chakra properly? Yeah, we start to teach kids how to use chakra in the second academy year. Why are you asking? Haruka asked curiously. Well to tell you the truth, I'm doing chakra control exercises now. I can climb the tree now, but I still need to master it. I can stay on the tree without using arms for 3 minutes. It is not enough in case if I need to fight while using tree climbing. And before I start doing water walking, I need to master tree climbing. But for some reason my chakra control is so poor. Also, the librarian told me to meditate to find out what my chakra flow is, and I found out that my chakra reserves are too big for an academy student. In the beginning, I thought it was normal, but when I read some books, I was quite surprised for now, I have reserves for an average chunin. I don't know how that's possible, but I'm more than happy for it. Aruka was very surprised. He didn't expect to hear those words from Naruto. To hear that he had been doing tree climbing exercises and was doing very well. He had always thought Naruto was only doing pranks in his free time. Naruto saw the look on Aruka's and grinned I'm not stupid, Aruka sensei Yes, in my free time I do pranks so people would notice me, but I also use my free time to go to library and read some books there. It is very boring, but I have to do it if I want to become a good ninja, right? Naruto, I didn't expect this from you huh? you surprised me a little bit. Haruka said. Are you sure I surprised only for a little bit? He replied with a wide smile. Okay, okay, you got me. You surprised me a lot. But why do you act like an idiot in class? Haruka knew he asked it in the rough way, but he wanted to just know why Naruto acted that way. Well, most of the things you teach in calls I already know from the books. And it's just so fun to prank you and make you angry in the front of whole class. And besides, I don't want to look better than anyone else. I could even become arrogant at the end of the academy if I felt I was better than the rest of the class. He honestly answered. In public he always seems to be dumb and a loud mouth, while in reality he was quite focused and determined. Thank you for your treat, Iruka sensei but it's already late. See you tomorrow in academy. Oh, and please don't tell anyone about what we talked about today. Before Ruka could say or ask anything else, Naruto was already gone. Oh well, at least I know he is alright on his own. At least now I know some of the reasons for his acting if those can be called reasonable. Haruka thought. He then finished his bowl and headed home in order to prepare for tomorrow's lessons. Minus three days later, in the forest near Konoha. In the forest near Konoha, a small camp was set up which was well hidden between brushes and trees, so it wouldn't be too easy to find it. It was night now. There was a small campfire big enough to cook and small enough to stay hidden. From the faint light of the campfire, you could see two small tents which were big enough for one person in each. Also, there were three figures standing near the campfire. It was too dark, and the campfire didn't give much light to see their faces or what they were dressed in. One of the figures asked are you sure about this? The figure was apparently male. He had a rough voice and he looked muscular. It was too dark to see more details. The second figure then spoke of course I'm sure. The Hokage himself allowed it. Old fool, he should know better than do something so foolish. It didn't have as rough voice as the first figure, but it also belonged to a male. In a dark night you could see that he wasn't as muscular as the first one, and he had shoulder-length hair. It was indeed foolish to allow this trip when the class has so many promising students. Especially those heirs from the clans. If your information is correct, we will get a nice amount of money once we capture some of them, although our priority is the Hyuga heir. What was her name? 
Hinata no Hinata no, that's not it Hinata yeah, Hinata, that was her name, right. A third and a final member of the band was a female. She had a beautiful voice, that kind of voice which singers usually would have. She had long hair which reached her shoulder blades and which she kept in a ponytail. Although it was dark, you could see a large bust she had. It wasn't as big as one of the Sanin member had, but still in some years. The first one nodded and turned to the second figure, what if there will be more ninja guarding them? What, you scared, Shigeru? My, I thought you're tougher than that the female of the band laughed at her teammate. Shut up, Ryoko. Think with your head, not with those watermelons of yours, he then pointed at Ryoko's large bust and continued, what if more ninjas appear? While we are strong, we can't take on a lot of ninjas at once. We need to find out how many ninjas will be there with the kids. The female frowned when Shigeru pointed at her bust. She really didn't like when someone noticed these globes and made comment about them. She wouldn't admit it, but her teammate had a point. They couldn't face many ninjas at once, because while they were fighting, the kids could escape or someone might call for reinforcements. Whatever was the only thing she could say in reply. Then the second figure spoke. Don't worry. There will be only two ninjas with them. One is Iruka Yamino. And the second is he then grinned evilly, well, tell you the truth, the second ninja who will lead them is me. He then took out a map of a nearby area around Kanoha and pointed at one place in the forest, near the river. This is where me and Aruka will lead them, you just have to set up the traps here. Once the fighting starts, don't worry. Aruka isn't much of a fighter being an academy instructor for so long, he lost some skills over the years. The three then discussed the plan and agreed to it. It looks perfect. And those kids won't fight back they don't teach them a lot in the first year after all. Shigeru answered while he held his chin in his palm. Yeah. Well then, you should return to Kanoha so no one notices your absence. In the meantime we will rest and prepare for this operation Ryoko said, and with that she stood up and gracefully walked to her tent. Very well then. Said the second figure and he too left the scene. While he was heading back to the village, only one thought slipped through his mind well, soon enough I will get the Byakugan and hand it over to Arachimaru who will reward me with that power he promised. And I should also kidnap that demon brat and sell it to another major village. He, I will be rich and powerful in no time. With that, he had very malicious smile as he walked towards the village. For now, everything was perfect. Minus two days before the trip. The day wasn't as sunny and hot day as it usually was in Kanoha. Dark clouds covered the usually bright sky. It didn't start raining yet, but it looked like it will start any minute now. Also, it seemed the weather affected the villagers there weren't as many smiles as usual, and everyone tried to finish their business as quickly as possible in order to get back home earlier. No one wanted to stay out for too long. Things weren't better in the academy. The class was unusually silent and the students listened to Aruka's lessons. Although one couldn't say unusually silent about one Nara kid he always sleeps. Even the usual loudmouth, Naruto, didn't do any pranks or disrupt the lesson. Haruka wasn't complaining. Although he liked that his students paid more attention to him and he didn't need to shout to silence them, still, the eerie mood unnerved him a bit. He was used to the loud class and seeing them like this was a bit scary. Well, as scary as it could get with class full of 8 year olds. Now when the lesson came to an end, he decided to brighten up the mood a bit. What he was going to say would definitely bring joy to his students' faces, it is almost the end of the lesson, he then stopped, looked at his students and saw some smiles. He then continued, but before you go I wanted to announce two things it's about the trip, so listen carefully. The first thing is there is too many of us, and I don't want to scatter you all around the forest in your own tents. So you will need to share with others. Let's see those who have bigger tents will need share with those who have smaller ones. It will also help you to look out for each other, almost like an experienced genin team. I would say one team should consist of two to four members. Also, there will be some team games while on the trip with a prize to winners. The moment he finished speaking, the class's mood was far better than it was everyone started chatting and making teams. Haruka didn't mind it and allowed them to sort out the teams after which he said, listen up. I will give you 20 minutes to sort out the teams. After you're done, you need to choose a leader of the team and come to me so I can write down the names. It will be so much fun. They could sleep in one tent and do so many things together, they won't have to be by themselves. They could share the food. That was the summary of everyone's thoughts. But Naruto wasn't one of them. He had a somewhat sad and disappointed expression on his face. Oh man, this is just great I don't have a tent at all, and nobody will want to share with me. Hell, I don't even have normal friends here. At least no one here is glaring at me like the others in the village do. And he wasn't the only one with those thoughts. Sasuke, who sat next to Naruto, was thinking almost the same. Great. Although I have a tent, I don't want to stay by myself. And I don't have any friends here either so no one will invite me. Well, except for his fangirls, if they could ever be considered friends. 
and he would never go to them. Never. Ever. Even if it was the end of the world. The Uchiha clan were a very arrogant clan. As far as Sasu could remember, he was always taught that the Uchiha was the most powerful clan in Konoha, as well as their Sharingan, their Kekei Genkai, is the most powerful Dojutsu and most powerful bloodline. His father, Fugaku, always said don't pay attention to the lower class people. They are not worth our time. We are elite, so we will associate ourselves only with elites, although he didn't like what he heard, he knew better than to argue with his father, so he just agreed with him. He thought people should treat each other equally, and that kind of attitude will only make enemies. At least he had his brother with him, Itachi, who had the same thoughts as Sasuke. Itachi was a very loving brother and always helped Sasuke with his training whenever he could. He didn't like his clan either, he actually despised them, although he didn't show it. The only thing the Achiha, except him, were interested in was power. Any and everything for more power. Itachi tried to ensure that Sasuke knew that it was alright to be friends with classmates, but Sasuke was still afraid of his father. What if he found out somehow and then punished him for associating with lower class people? Itachi could understand the feeling. After all, Fugaku was the head of the Ichiha clan. That's why Sasuke acted unfriendly towards everyone. If someone asked him something, he would answer, but he would never start a conversation on his own. Itachi vowed to Sasuke that someday he could enjoy his life and make friends just like everyone else. Sasuke then put those thoughts aside and tried to find a solution to his problem. He turned his head to the right and saw Naruto's gloomy facial expression oh, that's right Naruto doesn't have much friends either. Maybe before he could finish his thoughts, he heard someone call out to the blonde. Boy, Naruto. Someone shouted. Naruto turned to find who had called him. After some seconds he saw Shikamaru's intent gaze. He, Naruto, then figured out it was him, Shika, who called. What is it, Shikamaru? He asked. Well me and Choji decided to ask if you would like to be on our team. He simply answered, still looking at Naruto. The blonde was surprised. He didn't expect to actually be invited to a team. He thought he would be left out like he usually was. But Naruto knew better than to blindly trust anyone, even his classmates. His life at the orphanage taught him that. Why me? I'm sure there are many others who would like to be on your team. Besides, I will just slow you down when we will set up a camp and I probably will embarrass you with my behavior. He replied carefully. Doji, who stayed silent the whole time, finally spoke. You're not so bad Naruto. It's actually funny to see all those pranks and your jokes. But. Oh shut up, Naruto. Stop acting. I know you're not as stupid like you want everyone to think. And words you just spoke prove it. Now, this caught Sasuke's attention. Huh? Naruto muttered. Did I say something wrong which was out of my academy character? He wondered. Shikamaru rolled his eyes. Did he really need to explain it him? Troublesome the loud mouth Naruto which you usually pretend to be would have accepted this offer immediately and he would be confident about his abilities. He also wouldn't say that behavior crap as well. And it's not like you have any choice anyway I don't think anyone else will invite you. Arg I knew it. If someone could figure out I was acting, it would be the Nara and their brains. Thank Kami no one's paying attention to our conversation, Naruto thought with some worry in his eyes, oblivious to the fact that Sasuke was also listening. Fine, I really don't have much choice, right? Right. Also, we want you to be our team leader. Choji said. When his ears caught the words you and team leader in one sentence, he was shocked. He was surprised at first when he was invited to a team and now said team wants him to be their leader, it was too much for his poor brain. What? Why me? I'm not sure if I'll be good enough for you guys. He asked with surprise. So he puts others in first and doesn't care about himself interesting. Shikamaru thought and then answered. Yes, we want you to be our team leader. Firstly, I'm too lazy to be one, Choji doesn't fit for this role either. Secondly, it's not some kind of dangerous mission or anything just a field trip with some team games. And I'm sure it will be fun with your attitude. With that, he smiled, bringing out his ace. And finally, you need to practice some leadership skills if you want to be Hokage, right? Now Shikamaru was grinning like madman. Checkmate. Ugh, fine. As you said, it's not some kind of mission so I can do it. Nothing will happen to us anyway but using my dream against me was unfair. He then looked at the smiling Shikamaru and asked but don't say anything to anyone about my acting. Please. He really didn't want to show his true personality to others. He wanted it to be a surprise when they actually became ninja. And although shouting about how he was going to become the strongest Hokage ever was part of his acting, part of his mask, it was also his sincere dream. Sure. Besides, I would like to know you better. For now, you're one big blonde mystery, and I hate mysteries. Want to be our friend. Shikamaru asked and Choji just nodded, showing that he didn't mind having another friend. Naruto was very happy. Finally. 
I can have some friends. He thought. For as long as he could remember, for some reason, other kids always stayed away from him and didn't let him play with them. But before he could answer, they heard someone screaming. When they turned their heads to see who screamed, they saw a group of Sasuke's fangirls arguing about something. Then all the girls looked at Sasuke, and to his utter horror, they started to run towards him and shouting Sasuke-kun. Join my team. And Sasuke-kun. Don't listen to her, join me. The leader of fangirls was none other than Ino. And right beside her was Sakura, her rival. If there was something Sasuke really didn't like, it was fangirls. Why? First, they only cared about their looks and couldn't make interesting conversation. Secondly, for some unknown reason, they were always shouting, it brought headaches. And Sasuke somehow always knew what they were planning to do. Before the girls could reach Sasuke and claim him, he set his escape plan in motion. Shikamaru. Can I join your team? He urgently asked while shedding an eye tears. Shikamaru was a bit surprised because Sasuke had never showed so many emotions fear, hope and desperation all at the same time. But he understood his situation, he would have done the same thing in his place. Troublesome asked Naruto, he's team leader. I don't mind though, I know how dangerous fangirls sometimes are. But my tent is only for three people, so somebody will have to bring a bigger one. He answered with small smile. Don't worry about the tent I have one big enough for four people. Sasuke urgently answered and looked at Naruto with pleading eyes. Naruto wanted to agree the more the merrier. But at the same, he didn't want to, because as far as he knew, Sasuke wasn't very friendly. But as we all know, he was not the kind of the person who said no if someone needed his help. Fine, I don't mind. But be friendly at least and don't ignore us when we speak to you. Naruto answered. Sasuke just nodded. Maybe now I could make some friends on this trip and my father wouldn't know about it. He thought with a smile. Thanks, guys. You really saved me from those banshees. Right after he finished that sentence, the just-mentioned banshees finally reached their Sasuke-kun. Before they could start to shout and scream, Naruto said sorry, girls, but Sasuke is already on my team. The girls looked at Naruto with confusion, and one civilian family girl frowned and said oh, please. Who would like to be on your team? Ha, even if you could be in a team, no one would allow you to be a team leader, and then she laughed and continued with a sweet voice so, Sasuke-kun, would you? But before she could finish, Sasuke angrily interrupted, shut up. It's true, I'm on his team already and he is the team leader. He really hated when someone sounded superior to someone else. Bibi boo but why? W why would you like to be on a team with TT that T that D demon? My mum always says he is a D demon. She stuttered. She was shocked to see such a reaction from her Sasuke-kun. And here it starts again Naruto muttered. But Shikamaru heard him. Demon. Is that the reason why he doesn't have any friends? Why would parents say such things? Shikamaru thought curiously. But today wasn't the day he could ask them any question in the matter. Demon. Is that why you show your superiority over him? Sasuke asked angrily. He wasn't in the mood to argue with fangirls. Besides, it was pointless anyway, because they would agree with anything Sasuke said, and that was one more reason why he didn't like them. Listen, I really don't like girls like you, so I wouldn't have joined you anyway. I mean, all you care about is how you look and your obsession over me. If you're going to continue like this, then I suggest you quit the ninja academy, because if you become a ninja, you will be dead weight on a team, and you will die quickly on a mission. The but. Egan. You annoy me. He turned away from them and didn't say anything else. Wow, that was rough, but I can't disagree with him. And it's also is the first time I've seen him saying so many sentences in one day. Naruto thought and chuckled. Others were a bit surprised as well it's the first time they saw the side of Sasuke. The girls went to their seats with aura of depression over them. They had never expected this reaction from their Sasuke-kun. Just after this little scene was finished, Iruka called the team leaders to write down the names. He was very surprised about Naruto, but at the same time he was happy for him. He deserved to have some friends. Okay, listen up now. Before you go, there is something else I wanted to announce. Those who are going on the trip don't have to come to the academy tomorrow in order to prepare. But those who are not going to the trip will have to attend academy tomorrow, Wednesday and on Thursday. Half of the class was happy and the other half was not happy for obvious reasons. Why do we have to attend the academy while everyone else will is relaxing? Someone asked. This field trip is not about relaxation. It will be a real field experience for them. Also, they will have lectures, too. Me and Mizuki will not be in the academy for the next three days, so those of you who are not going on the field trip, listen carefully. Your lessons will be held in room 213. The teacher there already knows about this. Oh, and for those who are going on the trip don't forget to be, be here on Wednesday at 9am, or we will leave without you, and you will have to attend the academy. That's all. See you on Wednesday. Class dismissed. 
as everyone started to head out of the class, Naruto nervously asked his companions H hey guys. D do you want to meet tomorrow so we could buy supplies for a trip and hang out a bit? It was the first time in some years he had asked someone to hang out with him. He thought they wouldn't come, but this time, it wasn't the case. Sure, why not? Tomorrow we don't have academy so I don't have anything else to do, anyway. I could stay home, but my mom would force me to do more troublesome things. Shikamaru answered. Yeah, why not? I don't have anything to do tomorrow, either. Chaoji said. Naruto was very happy. For the first time in his life, someone accepted his invitation. He then turned to look at Sasuke and ask him, what about you, Sasuke? Wanna come? Sasuke looked at Naruto, but then turned away so no one could see his sad expression. Sorry but I can't. My father will need my help tomorrow in some matters. He lied sadly. His father didn't need any help. Ever. He just wouldn't be allowed to hang out with low-class people. And the only clan they didn't consider low-class was the Hyuga clan. But the Achiha hated the Hyuga clan more than anything, because the Hyuga were their so-called eternal rivals or something. Naruto and Shikamaru noticed the scowl on Sasuke's face when he mentioned his father and decided not to push the matter. Okay then. Let's meet tomorrow in the nearby park at 11 am. See ya, guys. Naruto said happily and went home. Yeah, bye. Choji and Shikamaru answered and went in the other direction. Same day, Ichiha compound. What do you mean you're on a team in this field trip? Fugaku, Sasuke's father, asked his son after hearing about everything Aruka had said. Fugaku had long, dark brown hair that reached down to his shoulders and onyx-colored eyes, with visible creases below them, like Itachi has. He wore a black shirt with the Ichiha symbol on the shoulders, gray pants and a black open front apron with white diamonds on the bottom. Sasuke sighed and answered calmly. Father, please answer me who is better. A group of civilian fangirls or a group of kids from ninja families. Why are you asking? Of course those from ninja families. Fangirls are a pitiful excuse for female ninja, I bet they don't even know what a kunai is. There you go, father. When I saw a group of fangirls heading in my direction, I demanded to be part of the most promising team. Sasu calmly answered. You demanded to be part of the most promising. Heh, I like that, son. Remember to show your team how grateful they should be that you're with them. Dismissed. Very well, father. Sasuke said and left the room. That went better than I imagined. Thank Kami he didn't ask who is on this team. I can't believe he is my father if only mother was here. Sasuke sadly thought. He then remembered the day he saw his mother for the last time. Flashback three years ago. Be a good boy and listen to your brother. Here, take this lunchbox and share it with Itachi. Nakoto said while giving young Sasuke his lunchbox. Makoto was a fair-skinned woman with long, black hair with bangs hanging on either side of her face to roughly frame her cheeks and black eyes. She wore a simple dark purple blouse with a red plump skirt and a light yellow apron over it. Sasuke took the lunch box and said thanks, Kasan. When will you return from your mission? I don't know. Maybe after two days, maybe after four days. It depends on many circumstances. She answered. Okay then. Love you, Kasan. Oh, love you too, sweetheart. She said with sweet voice and kissed her son on forehead, after which Sasuke and Itachi went outside. After three days. It was late evening. After some light training, Sasuke and Itachi returned home. There, they saw a crowd of people talking to their father. It didn't look like anything important to them, so they just ignored the crowd and walked to their rooms. After a quick shower, Sasuke heard his father calling for him and his brother. He quickly dried himself, changed clothes and headed to the kitchen. When he arrived in the kitchen, he sat next to Itachi. In front of him sat Fugaku. Sasuke wondered where his mother was. Sasuke Itachi Fugaku started the conversation with an emotionless face. Where is mother? Did something happen to her? Itachi asked, worry in his eyes. Your mother is dead. Fugaku answered without any sadness in his eyes, but he sounded sad. What? No. It can't be true. You're lying. Sasuke shouted, tears forming in his eyes. I'm sorry, but it is true. We found her dead this morning with a kunai stabbed into her heart. After we found her, we returned to the village. We presume she was killed during her night watch by enemy ninja. No, it can't be true Sasuke quietly said, his eyes full of tears. Itachi wasn't faring any better. He had tears in his eyes, though not as much as Sasuke had he could control his emotions better. Mother Itachi thought, remembering all their happy times together. But then he realized something something is not right here. Even if one squad member was killed while on a mission, they wouldn't abandon the whole mission. They would have sealed the body in a scroll or waited for reinforcements to take body and then continue with their mission. He thought, but he decided not to speak his concerns. He will do his own investigation later. In two days time there will be funeral for her. Please, be ready. 
With that, Fugaku stood up and left the kitchen, leaving his two sons to mourn their mother's death. Flashback end. A single tear fell from Sasuke's eyes when he remembered the painful memory. No, my mother wouldn't want me to cry. She wouldn't like me to mourn forever. Sasuke thought and wiped away the tear and headed to his room to get some sleep. Next day. The next day was much warmer and brighter than the previous one. Shikamaru, Choji and Naruto were walking around the village and were having a light chat on various topics. The group was receiving hateful glares from the villagers. It wasn't the whole group who received them, though it was the one blonde kid in the group who received all the glares. And Shikamaru noticed it. Hey Naruto. Why everyone is glaring at you? What did you do to them? Shikamaru asked curiously. Naruto put his hands behind his head, showing that he was quite relaxed, and answered the question of his new friend I don't really know. As far as I can remember, I've always received them. I'm used to them now. Strange. If you didn't do anything, why would they look at you like that? Chaoji asked while munching his crisps. Is it about the demon thing that other girl talked about yesterday? I will need to ask dad later. Shikamaru thought. As they continued to wander around the village and continued their chit chat, they decided to buy some supplies for tomorrow's trip. Now they stood in front of a grocery store and were ready to head in when Naruto stopped them. You guys go ahead and buy the stuff we about discussed before. He'll wait for you here. Um, Naruto. Don't you want to come in with us? Choji asked and gave Naruto a confused look. Well, I want to go, but they will just throw me out. And if we will go to shops where I'm allowed in, they will just overprice everything for me. They say it's some kind of tax, but I don't quite believe them. But there's nothing I can do about it. Naruto answered without a care in the world. What? Both Choji and Shikamaru asked. They were completely shocked after hearing that. But how do you live? I mean, do you have enough money to feed yourself? Choji asked. He couldn't help but to be a bit worried for his new friend. Okajiji always gives me a monthly allowance. When I receive the money, I carefully plan on what I'm buying so I could survive the month. You don't have any parents, right? Shikamaru asked. After he received a nod from Naruto, he continued why aren't you in the orphanage, then? Naruto didn't want to tell them, but they were his new friends after all. And it looked they were worried about him. Well, when I was five they kicked me out. Shikamaru widened his eyes, and Choji stopped eating his crisps. But before they could ask anything else, Naruto continued and I'm happy they did. I wasn't treated very well there anyway. Look I don't want to talk about this, so please don't ask anymore. And please don't say anything to others. Both Choji and Shikamaru nodded in agreement and decided to ask him later, when he will open up more to them. Come on, Choji. Let's go and buy the supplies while Naruto is waiting here. Naruto, meet us here after 20 minutes, okay? Sure. See you later, guys Naruto waved to friends and decided to walk around the village for a bit, ignoring all the glares. Minus 20 minutes later. As Naruto came closer to the meeting spot, he saw Shikamaru and Choji already waiting. He greeted them and decided to browse through all the goods they bought. Okay you bought everything we will need for tomorrow. Naruto said. After that, his stomach growled indicating it was time for lunch. Naruto smiled sheepishly and rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment, right wanna come and grab a bite to eat before we go home. Joji smiled sure, why not? He answered. Where to? Let's go to Ichiraku Raymond. It's the only place I'm treated with kindness. Naruto answered with a sad smile. Both friends didn't want to argue, seeing Naruto's sad expression, so they just agreed. And they didn't mind Raymond either. At Raymond stand. I Tuchi Jiji, am San. Naruto greeted Ichiraku Raymond's stand owner and his daughter who also worked there. Both of them were very kind to Naruto and didn't see him as the demon brat as others did. Hey Naruto. Both of them greeted. How are you? Am asked. I'm fine, thanks. I've got a field trip tomorrow, so me and my new friends bought some supplies. We're in one team for this trip. Naruto answered with happy face. New friends? Care to introduce them? Am curiously asked the blonde. Yeah. The lazy looking one is Shikamaru Nara, and the one who is eating crisps is Choji Akimichi. Nice to meet you. I'm very happy for you, Naruto. You finally made some friends. She said with a warm smile. Then they took their seats with Choji sitting next to Naruto and Shikamaru next to Choji. So what are your orders? Tuchi asked. One Maizo Raymond please Shikamaru said. The usual, five bowls of Maizo Raymond. Naruto said with big smile. Raymond was his favorite food, and today he could spend extra for it. Doji was surprised at Naruto's large order and took it as an unspoken challenge and ordered six bowls of beef ramen. It was his pride as an Akamichi to out-eat anyone no matter the circumstances. After 20 minutes of eating and chatting, Choji couldn't take another bite. I can't believe it someone ate more than I did. Choji said to Naruto with respect. 
almost no one could out eat an Akamichi, and just now Naruto did it like it was a piece of cake. Shikamaru was surprised as well. So Choji is not the only one with black hole for a stomach troublesome. Well, ramen is my favorite food after all. Tuchi Jiji, one more bowl of Maizo ramen please. It will be the last for today. Naruto said. Doji couldn't believe Naruto had ordered another bowl. He had eaten 10 bowls, and Naruto is ordering 12th Naruto. It doesn't mean I will lose next time. He said in a challenging tone. Shikamaru cried in I'm tears and said why do all my friends have to eat so much? Why does no one else enjoy sleeping or watching the clouds as much as I do? Doji and Naruto laughed at their friend's antics someday, you will meet that kind of person, Shikamaru. They then paid for their food, said goodbye to each other and went home. Next day. It was a sunny Wednesday morning. Although it was a bit cool, it was still pleasant. In front of the academy stood many students separated into groups of twos, threes and fours. Everyone had bags and backpacks, and everyone was yawning. Good morning, class Iruka greeted them. Morning, Iruka sensei Now, I will call your names and check who's here and who's not. I will start with team leaders. After I call your name, you have to step forward. After that was done, he continued now I will call others. When I call your names, you have to join your team leader. After five minutes of checking, okay, everyone's here. Let's move out. We're heading to the village gates. After that was said, Hiruka moved forward with students behind him, and behind the crowd of kids were Mizuki. No one noticed the malicious smirk on his face. Near the village gates. So, when do you think we will reach our destination? Naruto asked his companions, trying to make light conversation while they were walking. How should we know if we don't even know where our destination is? But I think in one or two hours we should be there. Shikamaru answered. Shikamaru has a point, Naruto. Hiruka sensei wouldn't select a place too far away from the village because we are not ninja yet and most people here can't keep walking for more than two or three hours without rest. Sasuke answered with a smile. He was happy he could finally talk with someone and not have to be afraid of his father. Hey Sasuke Munch, how come you're actually Munch talking with us? Choji asked curiously while eating his never-ending bag of crisps. Yeah and you're smiling too. Something's wrong here. Now who are you and what did you do to the brooding Acha? Naruto added with a small chuckle. Sasuke's eye twitched in annoyance. Just because I don't talk in class and act like brooding Acha doesn't mean I'm one. Shikamaru rolled his eyes and sighed geez. My class is full of clowns and actors. I sometimes wonder if this really is a ninja academy and not some theater school. Oh really? Then why do you act like breeding a chiha when you can easily make friends like everyone else? There you go. Naruto laughed. What about you? I'm sure if you didn't act like an idiot, you could make friends as well, Sasuke answered with a victorious grin as he saw how it silenced Naruto. But he failed to notice the sad expression on his face. It didn't go unnoticed by Shikamaru and Choji. Shut up, idiot. Shikamaru whispered so Naruto couldn't hear him. When he saw Sasuke's confusion, he decided to elaborate do you remember what that girl said to him yesterday in class? After getting a nod from Sasuke, he continued, then it shouldn't be that hard to realize why exactly he didn't have friends. For some reason, parents tell their children to stay away him. After hearing that, Sasuke's eyes narrowed. He then whispered back to him I thought it was the way she showed her superiority over Naruto. Doji shook his head no. Munchi told us yesterday Munchi was treated that way Munch ever since he can remember Munch. But he Munch doesn't know why. Yeah. And we saw how villagers were glaring at him yesterday when we met up. Why would anyone do that to him? Sasuke asked. Shikamaru shrugged. No one knows. But this topic is a bit painful for that troublesome blonde. When Sasuke looked at said blonde's face, he saw an expression of pain and sadness. Almost the same expression Sasuke sometimes sees in a mirror. He then realized Naruto had it worse than he did. Naruto, oblivious, as always, to the whispering, decided not to think about his past and changed the topic, hey, guys, wanna pull some pranks on sensei or the other kids? He asked while grinning like mad. Sasuke smirked and was relieved at Naruto's sudden change of mood. Shikamaru and Choji just smirked, showing they agreed with him. Unknown to them all, even for the two chunin, they were followed and watched, they were followed by a man wearing a weasel mask, indicating he was an Anbu member. He was none other than Itachi Acha. He wore black pants, short-sleeved shirt and grey chest armor, metal arm guards and gloves. He also had a simple sword on his back. He was happy seeing his brother laughing with his classmates. Sasuke would have been able to do that long ago if it weren't for their father. Just thinking about their father made Itachi frown. He then remembered why he was there. Flashback. One day before the trip. You summoned me, Hokage-sama. Itachi asked the leader of their village. Hiruzen looked at Itachi with tiredness present in his eyes. He then poofed out a cloud of smoke from his pipe and answered, yes Itachi. 
I have a special mission for you. Well, it's more of a request than a mission. Itachi raised an eyebrow, curious at what the Hokage would ask of him. And what would it be? As you may know, the kids in the academy have a field trip. When he received a nod from Itachi, he continued, I want to ask you if you could keep an eye on them until the trip ends. Now Itachi was curious why the Hokage would request such a task. After all, there would be two Chunin with the kids. But why, Hokage-sama? From what I've heard, this trip is not far from the village, and there would be two Chunin with the kids. Why should an Anbu watch them? You have a point there, Itachi, but my intuition tells me something is going to happen. Maybe I'm just being paranoid eight-year-old kids outside the village, and most of them are clan heirs a lot can happen. He poofed another cloud of smoke still I can't get rid from this feeling, that's why I want to give them some extra protection. Just in case if something happens. Hokage answered. I see. Very well, I accept your request. It will also be interesting to see how my brother interacts with others. Itachi said with a small smile. He really wanted to see if Sasu could still make friends after so much time without normal socializing. Thank you. Make sure to stay hidden also, do not interfere unless it's a life and death situation. I feel something's going to change in this trip something very important is going to happen. What do you mean, Hokage-sama? I do not know, Itachi. Interfere only if it is life and death situation, understood. The old Hokage ordered with power behind his words, showing why he was still the village leader. Despite Hokage's tone though, it didn't affect the young Ichiha genius. He was a professional and only few things could scare him. Hi, Hokage-sama. I will leave now and prepare for the two-day trip. When Itachi received a nod from his leader, he left, still wondering what old Suratobi meant. I still can't shake this feeling. The Hokage thought. And when he saw a pile of papers in front of him, he frowned ugh this paperwork will kill me one day. Flashback end. I still can't see what can go wrong here. But if Hokage-sama is right, then I better keep my eye on them. Itachi then focused on his mission, if this could be a call to mission for an Anbu captain, and continued to watch the kids while he was trying to keep hidden. Well, he didn't need to try after all, they were only a bunch of kids and two Chunin. Back with the kids. An hour and a half had passed since they left the village. Now the kids and the two teachers were standing in a nice forest clearing surrounded by trees which was lit by sunlight. The shadows from the trees gave a mysterious and beautiful sight, one could hear various birds chirping and singing from the trees as well, you could even hear the bubbling of a stream or a small river nearby. The water gave off a nice and fresh smell in the clearing, while the sound of the rushing water also gave off a relaxing sensation. If one looked closely, one could also spot some forest animals between the bushes. Rabbits, small foxes, squirrels and many more wildlife. The kids widened their eyes when they saw the beautiful clearing, smelled the fresh air and saw the wild animals. Never in their lives had they seen something so beautiful not even in Kanoha. They were happy they went on this trip. The kids hope this will be the place they will stay. Perfect spot. Iruka thought, with a large smile while breathing the fresh forest air, free from village's very sense. Okay, listen up. We'll make our camp here. I want each team to set up their tents in 30 minutes. Make sure you're not very far away from other teams. Then we will have a one-hour break, where we will eat and relax. Then for three hours you will have a lecture with me and Mizuki-sensei here and some light activities. After that, we will have our first team game. Is that clear? Hi, sensei. Everyone said in unison. Iruka smiled and continued do not wander too far away from the camp or you will have to spend the rest of the trip near me. Now, go prepare your tents. With another high in unison from everyone, the kids started to unpack their bags and start building their tents. The first team to complete this task was none other than Naruto's team. They did everything in 10 minutes in which Naruto showed great organization and leading skills, as great as an 8-year-old could have, where he assigned his teammates various tasks. Sasuke and himself were setting up the tent, Choji went to gather some dry logs or sticks or whatever cold burn, while Shikamaru set up the fireplace and put food on table, if a wooden plate on two wooden logs. Which Choji brought could be considered a table. Their small camp was not too far from forest, next to a large tree the largest in the clearing. Naruto chose this place because he knew his friend Shikamaru liked to watch clouds. It was more comfortable to lay on a tree branch and stare at the sky than lay on the ground. Anyway, they were quite happy they finished first, that meant they had more free time, which they used to chat and get to know each other better. The second team, which finished in 14 minutes, was Shino's team, consisting of Shino, Kiba and Hinata, isn't it ironic? They were not far from Naruto's team. Kiba took care of finding something to burn, seeing he had the most energy, Shino was setting up the tent, while Hinata was busy doing her magic near the fireplace and preparing the food. After everything was done, they decided to explore the beautiful clearing. Shino was interested in bugs, obviously, Hinata was wondering if there would be any medical herbs in the forest. 
She had a book in her hand with various pictures with plants. Kiba well Kiba was being Kiba running around and trying to come up with something fun to do. A third team, which finished in 19 minutes from the start was Sakura's team, consisting of Sakura, Ino and two random girls whose names were Seo and Hinajiku. Naruto's team were impressed, especially Sasuke. They expected this team to finish the last and complain about whatever fangirls could complain about in the forest. Well, Seo and Hinajiku were complaining and didn't do much. Both of them got the food, set up the fireplace and just sat there, waiting for something, while Sakura was setting up a tent with a victorious smile, and Ino was searching for wood with a frown. The reason for that was because Sakura and Ino were arguing about who will set up the tent. Why they were arguing, no one will ever know. But it seems Sakura won. Now both girls were searching for Sasuke-kun to spend more time with him, to Sasuke's horror, while the other two were just sitting near fireplace and waiting for something to happen. At least now Ino and Sakura didn't call Sasuke theirs. They agreed to spend more time becoming a ninja, hoping it will get Sasuke's attention, but they were still the fangirls. It's a good thing that Naruto's team were hiding in their tent so the girls wouldn't find them. To be more precise, wouldn't find Sasuke. The other kids managed to complete their task before 30 minutes had passed. Okay, time's up. Those who didn't manage to set up everything, you will do it later. Now everyone come here so we can begin our lesson. Haruka shouted so everyone could hear him. Almost everyone frowned and then sighed. Even outside of the academy they would get their lessons. Someone even muttered troublesome. You can try and guess who it was. As the kids gathered in front of their teachers, Mizuki decided it was the time to set his plan in motion. He secretly made some hand signs behind his back so no one would notice them. After that was done, three figures behind the tree saw the signs and started their plan. They quickly did half dozen hand seals in complete sync, ended on the ram seal, and muttered release after that was done, the area and clearing where everyone was, slowly filled with invisible chakra. This chakra came from four seal tags that were placed around the clearing. Also, there was a well-hidden fifth seal not far from kids. The fifth seal attracted chakra from the other seals, thus leading chakra to clearing. But it that wasn't the only purpose of the fifth seal. One of the figures did another set of hand seals and calmly said silent dream. After that, the fifth seal glowed a bit and all the chakra in the area was filled with various drugs. Everyone in the area suddenly felt tired and their eyelids became heavier. Most of the kids were already on the ground, sleeping. The only ones left standing were Naruto, Hiruka, Mizuki, Sasuke, Shikamaru and Shino. Although the latter three were barely fighting back the sleep, after a moment they all collapsed, unable to continue. On the other hand, Hiruka wasn't affected because he had some experience by being a Chunin and felt the Jinjutsu, he dispelled it, and Mizuki did the same. Naruto was feeling a bit tired, but he also could fight back, thanks to demonic chakra mixed with his normal one, thus this kind of Jinjutsu didn't work on him one dot. So Hokajama was right after all. But I can't intervene now, I need to find out who attacked them and why. Itachi thought. He reduced the distance between those who were still standing and suppressed his chakra as much as possible in order to stay hidden. What the hell? shouted Aruka. Mizuki. Check the perimeter and send word to Hokage-sama, meanwhile I will check on kids. That won't be necessary. Mizuki replied, grinning. Three figures then jumped from the forest side and stood next to Mizuki. After that, they took off their cloaks and showed themselves. To the right of Mizuki stood a female, Ryoko. She had a round face, narrow, green eyes, and brown hair which reached her shoulder blades, which she kept in ponytail. She wore a long, green Chinese-style dress with slits on the either side for easy movement, which reached a bit past her knees. Under the dress she had a mesh armor and tight shorts. Also, she wore a simple pair shinobi sandals. She had a shuriken holster attached to her right thigh for easy reach. To the left of Mizuki stood a muscular M.A.N. Shigeru. He wore a pair of shinobi sandals, anbu pants which reached his ankles, grey shin pads, a muscle shirt and arm guards. He had a kunai holster attached to his left thigh. He had short brown hair. Both of them wore hit I-8 with a music note on their forehead. What's the meaning of it? Mizuki, who are they? Hiruka worriedly asked. Yeah, Mizuki, tell him who we are and why we're here. Ryoko said with a smirk. Don't be stupid, Ryoko. Why would we want to tell our plans to an enemy? Shigeru said with annoyance. He wanted to finish as quickly as possible. He has a point, Ryoko. Now, Iruka, hand over Hinata and Naruto, and we will leave you alive. Mizuki said with a grin. What? Iruka-sensei, what is Mizuki-sensei talking about? Naruto asked. To say he was a bit confused would be a misunderstanding of the century. I don't know Naruto, but listen. Run to the village and inform Hokage about what happened here and request help. Iruka answered. Ah, he is not going anywhere. You see, we need the demon brat for our plans. Mizuki answered, chuckling. 
although Mizuki wasn't as close to Naruto like Aruka was, it was still painful to hear your sensei call you what the rest of the village does. Now, Naruto was feeling sad and his anger was rising. He had had enough first, the villagers called him demon brat, then he goes on athy trip, trying to have fun with his new friends. Then some random people appear, put a jinjutsu on everyone, and talk about taking Hinata and him for some plans. And then his own sensei calls him demon. Why, Mizuki? Why does everyone calls me demon? Why do you? Naruto demanded, while having tears in his eyes. You really wanna know? Mizuki smirked, fine. No, Mizuki, you can't. It's an S-class secret. Iruka tried to reason with the traitor. Who cares about that? I'm no longer a ninja of this pathetic village. Ryoko, Shigeru, handle Iruka and then take the Hayuga. I'll take care of this demon. Mizuki said. Both Ryoko and Shigeru nodded and were ready to engage Iruka. No. I will not let you harm Naruto. Iruka shouted and ran toward Naruto in order to protect him. But he couldn't reach him because he was kicked hard in the stomach and sent flying backwards. Iruka managed to land on his feet, then looked at his attacker. Sorry, but we are your opponents now. Shigeru said with a smirk. I need to finish it quickly if I want to help Naruto. Please, stay safe, I'll be by your side shortly. Iruka thought. I see. They want kidnap Hinata and Naruto to sell them to other hidden villages. Hinata because of her Byakugan and Naruto because he is a Jinchuriki. Itachi thought. I think it's time to intervene. He was about to jump from his hiding spot when he suddenly felt large chakra spike. What? Could it be Naruto? Maybe I should hide for a little while longer and see what happens. But Naruto. Iruka. Naruto shouted after Iruka was kicked. He was about to run to his brother figure when he was kicked by Mizuki. You're not going anywhere. Why, Mizuki? Why? Naruto cried. Well, I suppose I could tell you. Do you know why villagers hate you? Mizuki asked. When Naruto shook his head, he continued. Eight years ago, Kaiubi attacked our village. Many ninjas and civilians died that night. No one could stop the mad beast, but then the Yandame Hokage appeared and gave everyone hope. I already know that. Yandame killed the Kaiubi, so get to the point already. Naruto shouted, his anger building. Impatient, huh? Well, you see Kaiubi can't be killed because it's a creature of pure chakra. It can only be sealed. And Yandame did it he chose an orphan and sealed the beast inside it. It was you, Naruto. By becoming the host of Kaiubi, you became its reincarnation. Mizuki finished with Victoria's smirk when he saw Naruto's shocked face. Naruto's eyes widened. That makes sense. Demon Brad and Just Demon kicked out of the orphanage and stores and the hateful glares, parents telling their children to stay away from me. All because of Kaiubi. He then looked at Aruka, who was barely standing. He gritted his teeth well I don't care what villagers think. It's not my nor Kaiubi's fault if they can't see the difference between a kunai and the scroll it sealed in. I'll show them I'm no demon. There are people who care about me. I can't allow Mizuki to manipulate me. I will continue to protect them as I did so far by keeping Kaiubi in prison. And I am not its reincarnation. Then he remembered something what Aruka once told him. Flashback. Naruto being Hokage is not just about being acknowledged, but about protecting the village and your loved ones with your life and making life better for everyone. And you can become even more powerful if you have precious people to protect. Aruka said with a warm smile. Flashback end. Do you want to protect them? Someone asked. Naruto wasn't dumb, so he figured out that someone was speaking in his mind. Huh? He mentally asked. Do you want to protect Aruka and those kids here? The voice asked again. From the corner of his eyes he saw how Aruka was being beaten. He didn't have a choice. I don't know who you are, but yes. Protect my precious people. I don't know why I still love this village, but I will protect it with my last breath. I will become a Hokage and protect the village and my precious people. Naruto said with flames in his eyes, full of determination. Very well, I will give you the power to do so. The voice said, and chuckled evilly. When Mizuki saw the determination in Naruto's eyes, he became confused. It should have broken him. So will you he couldn't finish when he was thrown back by a chakra wave from Naruto. He felt a malevolent chakra and energy coming from Naruto. A chakra well known to him. No. Did I free the Kaiubi? With Aruka, Shigeru and Ryoko. Right after he landed, Aruka took six shuriken in each hand and threw them at Ryoko and Shigeru. He then did some hand seals and shouted shuriken cage bunch and no jutsu, and then six shuriken became fifty. Both Ryoko and Shigeru easily dodged them or deflected them with kunai, but they still received some scratches. But it was only for distraction, while both of them were evading shuriken, Aruka had already finished another set of hand seals and shouted doten. Rock spike. 
2.1 large rock spike shot up from the earth, ready to impale Ryoko, but she managed to dodge at the last second, but still received a deep gash on her shoulder. Shigeru saw that and quickly made hand seals, put his fingers near his mouth and shouted Katen. Fireball Jutsu. He then exhaled a medium-sized fireball at Aruka. Aruka quickly dodged it only to receive a sharp punch in his gut and kick in the face from Ryoko. He stumbled back and when he stopped, he was ready to defend himself. He then heard a nice boy singing, after which large plants with mouth started to grow from the ground. After that, said plants rushed at Aruka, trying to swallow him. What the fuck? Jinjutsu. He then dispelled the Jinjutsu, but it was too late because he received a strong punch from Shigeru which sent him flying. I think he broke my nose. Ryoko took out a kunai and went for the kill. Suddenly, the whole clearing was filled with malicious chakra and a shockwave threw them back a little. Naruto didn't know what was happening. First, he felt anger, a lot of anger. Secondly, he felt bloodlust he wanted to kill somebody and quickly. He looked up and around and saw Mizuki, the reason for his anger. Mizuki, meanwhile, watched Naruto with horror. Red chakra started oozing out from Naruto and bubbling. A second red chakra cloak started covering his body, fox-like ears grew, replacing his ears and a tail formed around Naruto. His nails grew out a bit and became sharper. His hair became spikier and wilder than before. His whisker marks became more pronounced. His eyes turned red and his pupils turned into slits. Then something happened. In a blur he disappeared and reappeared in front of Mizuki, his hand ready to strike. Mizuki was too shocked to even move. Naruto pierced Mizuki's chest and heart making a hole and killed him instantly. Mizuki didn't have time to even scream in pain. Naruto then took out his hand from the hole and blood started to spray out, covering him in it. Naruto then turned around and glared with his slitted eyes at Ryoko and Shigeru, who were shaking with fear. You will not harm my precious people. He roared in faster than a mere genin could see, he launched himself at Shigeru. Shigeru's shinobi senses kicked in and he managed to dodge a punch by jumping to the left and falling to the ground. Naruto was already on him, ready to pierce his heart like he did with Mizuki. Shigeru covered his head, ready to die. Before Naruto could finish, he felt pain in his back. He turned around and saw Ryoko throwing shuriken at him from a safe distance. Naruto then let out a roar with another shockwave, knocking back all the shurikens which were already impaled in him and others that were Alri had sent flying towards him. Naruto then redirected his attention to Ryoko and started to run towards her. Meantime, Shigeru was trying to run away. When Naruto reached Ryoko, he launched a punch at her face, which she quickly blocked with her arms. Thanks to Kaiubi's chakra cloak, Naruto burned Ryoko's arms, despite her blocking the punch. Naruto then quickly kicked her and she couldn't block it. She stumbled back and before she managed to push back the pain from the recent kick and burn, Naruto was already on her, impaling her chest. More blood spilled out from the hole and Ryoko fell down, lifeless. Naruto then turned around for his last target but couldn't find him. No. I must find him. I must find him and kill him or he will hurt more people. He will hurt more of my precious people if I do not kill him. Naruto nervously thought. Then another large chakra wave erupted from Naruto. His eyes began to hurt. He started to scream. He didn't see his blue and silver chakra scomb out of him and begin to swirl around, merging with the red one. He let out another painful scream. WWH what's happening? Haruka asked himself with fear in his eyes. Fear for Naruto. I have to intervene or this will turn ugly, Itachi thought worriedly and jumped out from his hiding spot. Are you alright, Haruka-san? Itachi asked. Hey Anbu. What are you doing here? No time to explain. Can you wake up the kids and lead them to a safe location? Why why yes. Good. I'll take care of Naruto-kun. Itachi said, and when he saw the worry in Aruka's eyes, he smiled under his mask and said, even in this state you're protective of him, right? Don't worry, I will not hurt him. I will just try to suppress the demon's chakra. Little did he know what was happening in Naruto's mind. Mindscape. It looked like some kind of sewer or underground bunker with various tunnels and pipes along the wall and ceiling. There was also water which could reach a human's ankle. In front were large cage-like doors with a simple paper, with the word seal in kanji instead of a keyhole. Behind the cage sat the nine-tailed fox, who was grinning like mad, enjoying the feeling of killing. It three couldn't see, smell or feel anything outside of the cage because of the seal, but its chakra cloak on Naruto was allowing him to feel the outside world, even if it was for a little while. So Kaiubi was laying there, enjoying the sensations, when suddenly blue and silver energy erupted at the end of the tunnel and rapidly went for a cage. Kaiubi saw that and started to feel a bit worried. The silver chakra felt familiar though, but it couldn't remember why. What the hell is happening? What is this chakra? He thought angrily. While the blue and silver chakra was heading towards the cage, both energies started to merge together. 
after a second, the two chakras became one. It became silver with a blue tint to it. When the chakra reached the cage, it suddenly stopped and started to form a figure. After some seconds, a tall human figure stood in front of the cage. It looked like he was made of silver and blue flames. And it seemed like the figure was looking directly at the Kaiubi. Before Kaiubi could say anything, the chakra figure opened its eyes. Well, to be more precise those eyes just appeared on the figure. But what shocked Kaiubi the most was what those eyes looked like. A ripple-like pattern around the pupil, with a light purple iris and sclera. Something felt very familiar about it. What the fuck? Who the hell are you and what are you doing here? Kaiubi roared, demanding answers. You will get your answers. But it is time to cure your unstable mind and bring you back. Also, it's time for him to awaken. Thefiger answered with a powerful yet calm voice. With that, he exploded and once again turned into a sea of silver chakra and tried to enclose Kaiubi. Kaiubi fought back by producing as much chakra as possible, but because of the seal, it was limited in how much chakra it could create. Within a minute of chakra fighting, the silver one won and enclosed the Kaiubi. IT Kaiubi was completely inside a large, filled in, silver chakra dome. After a minute, the silver chakra started to sink into the Kaiubi. Kaiubi let out a sharp roar of pain and tried to push back the silver chakra as much as possible, but to no avail. For a quick second, its eyes turned completely purple and then changed back. Now Kaiubi was radiating a orangish chakra. As quickly as everything started, it ended. Kaiubi panted heavily, exhausted. I now remember everything. Oh Kami, what have I done? I need to speak to the kit as soon as possible. Thank Kami I was sealed inside him, or I would have never returned. So he is the one. So you were right after all, dad. Kaiubi thought while smiling. It wasn't one of those maniac grins, it was a sincere, warm smile. Something, one would never expect from the king of demons. I still have some chakra left, so use it well and kill that bastard who dared to take away your precious people, kit. As the battle and the mindscape finished up, Naruto's chakra cloak became bright orange, instead of crimson red, it also looked much calmer. Naruto didn't feel any negative emotions anymore, instead he felt peaceful like he finally found something he had been searching for, for ages he felt like he was in a sanctuary now. Also, he was radiating the same calm aura, chakra, sensation, call it whatever you like, all across the clearing. This chakra was also affecting everyone unconscious slowly, very slowly, the Jinjutsu, which was cast on the kids, began dispelling. Then he opened his eyes. He was surprised. He could see so much further now and so much clearer. He could see various chakra signatures which nearby people radiated. He didn't know it, but his eyes had changed. His bright blue eyes had been replaced by a ripple-like pattern around the blue pupil, with a yellow iris and purple sclera. Around his pupils were two thin slits, like the Sharingan Tama 4 dot. He looked around and saw Shiger running away. Unconsciously, he focused on the retreating figure and channeled chakra to his right eye. Unknown to him, the two slits in his right eye started to spin. After a second, he saw a kanji for Mark appear on man's back. The kanji glowed a bit. Now, somehow, Naruto knew just how far Shigeru was. Naruto then ran toward Shigeru at incredible speeds, reaching him in five seconds. Before Shigeru could react, he was impaled through his chest from behind. The last thing he saw was a bloody hand sticking out from his chest, blood dripping on ground. He then fell to the ground, lifeless. After that was done, Naruto returned to Aruka. He stiffened when he saw a man near him, but relaxed when he realized it was Konoha Anbu. Aruka-sensei, are you alright? Naruto asked. Both Itachi and Aruka stared at Naruto in awe and shock. Awe, oh, because of his chakra cloak which radiated calmness instead of malicious bloodlust and was bright orange instead of crimson red. Shock because of his eyes. Arinigan. Itachi stuttered in his mind. Impossible. He has the legendary Dejutsu. But it doesn't look like legends described. It should have been with a light purple iris and sclera and black pupil. Maybe it's evolved. Maybe that's what Hokage-sama meant he thought with awe. Iruka had the same thoughts, but then he remembered his student asked him a question. Why yeah, Naruto. I'm fine, thanks. You saved me here. Iruka sensei do you hate me? I mean because of Kaiubi? Naruto asked with worry. No. Of course I don't hate you. You're like a little brother to me. And I can tell the difference between a beast and a human. You're completely human, Naruto, and I never hated you. Iruka said with a warm smile, forgetting about the changes in Naruto's eyes. Thank you, Iruka sensei Thank you very much. Answered Naruto with a bright smile and a single tear falling from his eyes. His eyes then turned back to his normal ocean blue, and his orange chakra cloak disappeared. He then fell unconscious to the ground as the kids finally woke up. When the kids woke up, the first thing they felt was calmness in the air and saw Naruto standing in an orange chakra cloak with fox-like ears and tails sticking out from it. 
then they saw Naruto fall unconscious. Naruto. Sasuke, Shikamaru and Choji shouted, worried for their friend. Little did they know said friend saved all of them from Kami knows what. Minus two minutes before battle in Mindscape. Somewhere in a Megakur. Shinra Tensei shouted Nagato, throwing Hanzo back with an invisible force. Hanzo stopped when he hit the wall of a nearby building. This fight was lasting for too long, Hanzo was already exhausted and can barely stand. Who the hell is this guy? And what's with those eyes? Any jutsu I throw at him, he just absorbs or repels. He thought with a scowl on his face. How can I win? No, the right question is. Can I win? He couldn't waste any more time thinking because he had to dodge paper shuriken. He then heard Nagato speaking. Your time has come to an end, you're already exhausted and I can still fight. Be honored, for you will be the first step towards a greater good. Your pain will be the first of many. Nagato calmly said, his voice void of emotion. Before Hanzo could answer Nagato, he raised up his hand and said Bancho Tenen and the next thing Hanzo knew, he is pulled towards Nagato with an unknown force. So this is it. When Hanzo finally reached Nagato, he was impaled by a black long and sharp rod, piercing his heart and immediately killing him. Just as Nagato did it, he quickly turned around and stared into the distance. Unknown to him, he was staring directly at Naruto as he awakened his Renengan. The woman with blue hair and a paper flower in it approached Nagato and asked is something wrong? Nagato didn't answer for a minute, still staring. He then turned his eyes to Conan and said, nothing. I just felt something familiar. Let's go. We have to deal with those who were loyal to Hanzo. When that is done, I shall become a god and you will be my angel. Yes Nagato. From this moment onward, my name is Pain. With that, both figures walked deeper in the town, killing everyone in their path who were still loyal to Hanzo. Soon, I shall bring peace to this tainted world because I was chosen to do so. Drip. 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 Was the only thing Naruto heard when he woke up. He looked around and tried to figure out where he was. It looked like some kind of sewer or underground bunker with pipes running along the walls and ceiling. The place looked creepy. Where the hell am I? Naruto asked himself. He tried to remember what happened and how he ended up here. Slowly, his memories came back to him. Oh, that's right. Mizuki and those two attacked us, then someone spoke to me, then I felt some kind of power, and then Naruto gasped oh no, I I I killed them. A all of them w what have I done? Am I re really a dd demon like everyone talks about? Tears started to form in his eyes. I I need to find somebody. I I need to find the exit. He took a step and noticed there was water that reached his ankles. But it didn't make Naruto's feet wet. Creepy. He was walking through various tunnels, trying to find an exit until he heard something. It sounded like breathing and snorting. Being a curious kid, Naruto walked towards the noise's direction. Plus, he hoped it will be someone who could help him. After about five minutes he reached a dead end. Or so he thought. He was standing in front of huge cage-like doors which were held closed with a paper with kanji for seal on it. In Naruto's opinion, it didn't look reliable enough to keep the door shut. And he couldn't see what was inside the cage because it was pitch black in there. But the breathing was louder than five minutes ago. Then, before Naruto could go into the cage, two large red eyes with black slit snapped open. As the eyes opened, a bit of light came into the cage, revealing a huge fox laying inside. But what caught Naruto's attention were the nine tails which was calmly swinging behind the fox. Naruto let out a scream and backed away from the cage. He had read about Kaiubi, who attacked Konoha eight years ago, and he knew what it looked like. But to be so close to it was a new experience for him. He was so frightened, he almost pissed his pants and he was gaping like a fish, afraid to say something or call for a help. The fox observed him with curious eyes until it became boring. Don't worry kid, I won't hurt or eat you. Kaiubi said with a surprisingly calm voice for a demon. HH how I can be be sure. You're a D demon after all. A and W why are you H here? Why you should be D dead. Naruto stuttered in fear, although in mind he was surprised it speaks. Ha. I can't be killed. I'm made of pure chakra, and no mortal can kill me. Kaiubi said with amusement. W what? Then W where are W we? Is this some K kind of D dream? I if you see can't be killed, W what happened to Y you ate Y years ago? Naruto asked. Little by little he was overcoming his fear and stuttering, seeing the demon is not going to kill him. Yet. Too many questions, Kit. But I will answer them. No, it's not a dream and we're in your mindscape which was created by the seal, which also put me here, in other words, we're in your mind. To answer your other question, although I can't be killed, I can be sealed using potent and strong seals. Kaiubi answered and watched Naruto, hoping he will figure it out himself. Kaiubi knew Naruto is not as stupid as everyone thinks. My mind can't be killed, only sealed cage with a seal voice in my head, villagers hate Naruto muttered, and then he widened his eyes. No, it can't be. 
you're sealed inside me. Yes, I'm sealed inside of you. I knew you would figure it out by giving you obvious hints. Fox answered with a grin, showing all its sharp teeth. It looked very intimidating. Me but why? Why did the Yandame Hokage choose me out of all O orphans? Naruto asked, tears coming from his eyes, fear forgotten. He just wanted to know why Yandame ruined his life. Should I tell him or not? Nah, I'll tell him, better now than later. He needs to know the truth anyway. If I'll tell him now, he will be broken just for a week or two. If I'll tell him some other time, he will be broken twice. Kai would be thought. D tell me, why? W why me? He just couldn't ask another parent to sacrifice their child. And he just chose a random orphan without parents. Naruto yelled angrily, his voice full of fury and his eyes red from tears. Yes and no. Yes, he chose you. No, he didn't choose, as you say, a random child. You're his son, Kit. He chose his own son. What? What are you talking about, Fox? Naruto asked. His anger and fury settled, and now confusion was in his voice. I can't be Yandame's son it just sounds too good. I can't be the son of such an important person. It doesn't make any sense. Yes, you are. Think about it. First, he chose his own newborn son, whose chakra coils didn't develop yet, and so he, son, would be loyal to village after sealing. Secondly, before he died, he asked the village to see you as a hero, who keeps in me in prison. Of course he was an idiot, believing they will honor this kind of wish. Thirdly, he knew something dark was coming, and this world needed a hero. Who else would be better for this role than a kid with the strongest of Bijuu sealed inside him and enormous chakra reserves? Kai would be answered with foxish smirk. Lastly, you look just like him. Exact copy. Blue eyes, blonde hair, the same face, only yours is a bit rounder than his. After thinking for a while, he admitted that it made sense. He remembered all the pictures of the Yandame, and he admitted that the Yandame looked just like him. He still needed to confirm it with a Jason. But now he couldn't hate the man. He sacrificed his life for the village, it was something that a true leader would do. And he asked the village to see Naruto as a hero. Something Naruto had always wanted. I see. It makes sense now. But I will confirm it with a Jason. I have to know if it's really true. Naruto said. I will be just nodded and waited for some more questions. It was shocking to find out the Lord of Demons, Kaiubi no Yoko, was sealed inside him. It was more shocking to find out the man he admired the most was his idol, was also his father, who sealed the said Biju inside him. But he will think about it later. I'll think about everything later when I will wake up. Can I ask some Q questions? Naruto asked. Every time he looked at Demon's eyes, he stuttered. Kaiubi smiled or grinned. Depends from which point of view one saw. Of course, Kit. We still have some time until you will wake up. All right. I've read the Kaiubi is a malicious being, full of rage and hatred, and kills everything it sees. But I don't feel anything evil from you. At all. Why? Well, it's simple. Your books lie. Huh? Kaiubi sighed. When I was created, along with eight other Bijuu, I was an intelligent creature. Our creator gave us a task and we were scattered about the elemental nations. Slowly, after thousands of years, the other Bijuu went berserk because of the long time in the living world or because of unknown conditions. Bijuu are not stable creatures. I too was losing my mind. But then something happened and my mind was healed. So I lived like that for some thousand years. But one day, a man found me and used his Keke Genkai, the Sharingan, to tame me. Then everything went blank. He was very powerful if he could tame me. Next thing I knew, I was fighting another man who could use Mokuten. Naruto was listening very carefully. In his opinion it was interesting to hear some history. Mokuten. You mean the Shadame Hokage? Yes. Don't interrupt me anymore, kid. Kaiubi growled. It really didn't like when someone interrupted it. As I was saying, I was fighting a man with the Mokuten ability and he won the fight. When I was released from the Sharingan's effect, I fled from there as far as possible, my instinct said to do so. But I was unsuccessful. Shadame found me and sealed me inside a woman. Being tamed by the Sharingan and then being sealed were key factors in losing my mind. It was the moment I lost all my clear thinking and acted only on instinct, rage and bloodlust. I was like a savage animal, like the books described me. Until now. I'm very lucky I was sealed inside you. The say Naruto was shocked was like saying the village loved him. To think Kaiubi was once an intelligent creature and was fighting with the Shadame Hokage himself. And lost. Any more questions so far? After moment of thinking and overcoming his shock, Naruto asked, if you were sealed, how did you break free and attack Konoha? Eight years ago, a man with a Sharingan set me free from my previous host. The same eyes tamed me again and controlled me. The man ordered me to attack the village. After his control of me was gone, everything I saw was red. I was filled with rage and I was on a rampage. 
Unfortunately, I don't know any details on how was I freed or who my previous host was. And I'm sorry for attacking this village. Okay, that explains why books say you're a malicious being. And don't apologize, it wasn't completely your fault. But why until now? What changed you? When you offered power, you sounded evil, but now you don't seem evil or malicious at all. I had hoped you will me ask that. You see, when I was flooding you with my chakra, you were subconsciously mixing it with your own chakra and channeling it to your eyes in order to find the last man. You put so much strain on your eyes that you would have become blind, but you got lucky and instead of going blind, you awakened a dormant power. Your bloodline. Am my bloodline? I have a bloodline. Naruto asked, shock clearly evident in his voice. Hayubi scowled. Naruto interrupted it again. Yes, your bloodline. Rinnegan. Don't ask any questions, I'll explain. Kaiubi said and thought how to explain it clearly, so Naruto could understand it, you don't have a normal Rinnegan though. It's a bit evolved. Also, you were gifted with special chakra, though I don't know why or how. Remember when you suddenly felt pain in your eyes and your whole body? After getting a nod from Naruto, Kaiubi continued, you were in pain because in here, your mindscape, your own chakra was mixing with a new chakra. When they finished mixing, this new chakra was fighting with me, trying to overcome me, while in real world three chakras were mixing together, which was successful. After your new chakra engulfed me, it started to heal my mind and placed various blocks so I wouldn't go berserk again. As long as I'm sealed inside you I will not become a savage animal again. Plus, even if I get free of you, I will start losing my intelligence only after some thousands of years. Kaiubi finished explaining. Naruto widened his eyes. He was shocked and awed at the same time. Rinnegan. But I thought it was just a legend. How come I have it? He asked, emphasizing the word I as if it was something you and fucking believable. In some way, it is a myth. You see, you don't get Rinnegan by blood. When dark times come and when the world is in danger, Kami herself chooses a human who will save the world or do something else in the name of the better good and who will wield the sacred eyes. The first human to ever wield the Rinnegan was Rikidu Senen, my creator. Only one human in the world can have the Rinnegan. Seeing that you have a different one, I presume there is already someone with the original Rinnegan. If Naruto wasn't in his mindscape, he would have passed out from this kind of information. Kami chose him. Rinnegan. Rikidu Senen created Kaiubi. It was too much for his poor brain. Wait, you said only one person can wield the Rinnegan, and then you say there's someone else with these eyes. Can you explain that? I am not sure, but I presume the original Rinnegan wielder did something that could bring more disaster to this world. Like, he chose the wrong path, did something wrong or something along those lines. Remember this, kid, humans are not perfect and when given power, they will not always walk the correct path. But if Kami chose you, I will trust her judgment and help you. Naruto just nodded in understanding. He didn't know why, but he understood everything the Kaiubi was saying to him. He didn't have as many questions as most kids his age would have. Maybe it had something to do with this new Rinnegan. He didn't think too much about it. Um, what do you mean by helping me? I will train you. Kit, Kami chose you, and my mission is to train you. Awesome. An overgrown fox with nine tails, who also happens to be a lord of demons, will train me. How awesome is that? Naruto said, excited and all fear lost, bumping his fist into the air until he heard Kaiubi's growl. Watch your mouth, kid. I'm not an overgrown fox. Um, sorry. Naruto said with sheepish smile. Oh, what do you mean by mission? I will tell you later. Our time has come to an end. Do you have any other questions? Actually yes. How will you train me? I mean, do I always will have to come here to speak to you? I'm afraid so, yes, kid. The seal is very powerful, and it will not allow me to speak to you, unless you're enraged. Next time when you come here, I will tell you your training schedule. I see. Do you have a name or I will I always have to refer to you as Kaiubi? And are you male or female? Naruto curiously asked. A demon lord should have a name or gender, at least he thought so. Kaiubi let out a small chuckle yes, I have a name, but I will not tell it to you now. And I don't have a gender, I'm a being made from chakra and given intelligence and consciousness. Why? I guess you will tell me your name when you trust me more. And it's uncomfortable to refer to you as it. From now on I will refer to you as he, okay? So the new Rinnegan boosted his intelligence. I'm glad he found out I will tell him my name when I get to know him better. Still, it's surprising. Kaiubi thought and answered sure, I don't care. Anything else? Yeah, last thing. How do I activate my Rinnegan? Well, you just channel chakra to your eyes and think Rinnegan. I think that's how it works. What do you mean by you think? You see, the original Rinnegan has one con. Once it awakens, it cannot be deactivated and always stays on. But yours, somehow, is different. 
well you will rest outside, I will analyze the recent battle and try to find out the new abilities of your Rinnegan. Go on, try and activate it. Kayubi answered, emphasizing word your. Um. Kayubi sama. Ho. Before Naruto could finish, Kayubi growled a bit, kid, don't sama me. Just Kayubi or Kayubi sensei. I hate all that honorific stuff. Naruto was a bit surprised and here I thought, the lord of the demons will demand respect. I guess not he thought and then continued, right. Kayubi. So, I can channel chakra to my eyes the same way I channel it to my feet, right? Kayubi rolled his eyes for such a stupid question. Yes. The same concept. Try to close your eyes. Usually it helps when activating Dejutsu for the first time. Naruto nodded and did as Kayubi instructed. He closed his eyes, imagined the chakra in his body and how it flows to his eyes, when he felt it was enough he thought Rinnegan. And quickly opened his eyes. He gasped. It became much lighter now, as if they were outside, in a field on a sunny day. Then, with his Rinnegan, he looked at Kayubi. Directly at his eyes. Kayubi's eyes widened when he saw the slits in both of Naruto's eyes begin to spin rapidly, and he knew something was going to happen. And it happened. He felt how a portion of his demonic chakra was being drawn out, it lasted for just two or three seconds. After that, he saw a ball of dark orange chakra floating in front of him. Then, the orange chakra quickly moved through the sealed gates and engulfed Naruto, who was sitting there as if nothing happened, his slit still spinning, and then was absorbed by him. His Rinnegan stopped spinning, deactivated itself and Naruto snapped back to reality. What just happened? When I looked in your eyes, I passed out for some seconds. Ayubi, panting slightly, said I don't know, kid it looks you awakened a new ability. You just took a portion of my chakra and absorbed it. It wasn't much though, less than half of the one tail chakra amount. But I didn't do anything. Will my Rinnegan always do stuff by itself? Naruto asked. He just hoped he didn't make Kayubi mad. He sighed in relief when he didn't sense any anger from the demon. No. I guess it will only happen when you awaken new abilities. Okay, our time has come to an end. We will meet again in the near future. Take care, kid. Kayubi said and closed his eyes to go back to sleep in order to regain all the strength he lost after the battle in the mindscape and now. Before Naruto could respond, bright light entered his mindscape and blinded him. He blinked a few times and after the fourth blink he opened his eyes. Where am I now? Naruto asked himself as he stared at the white ceiling. You're in the hospital, Naruto. Someone said. How do you feel? Naruto turned his head and saw someone who he thinks of as grandfather. Ajayasan. Naruto almost shouted in excitement. I'm okay, I guess. What happened and how long have I been here? Well, to answer your second question, you've been out for two days. The old Hokage answered. What? Two days? Naruto shouted. What the hell? Why so long? For some reason you had slight chakra exhaustion, as well as blindness. Even so, for you it is a long time. And to answer your first question, that's what I would want to know. Can you tell me what happened? He asked. Blindness? Was it because of my Naruto muttered? Hokage couldn't hear the last word though. Yeah, I can tell you what happened from what I remember. Hokage nodded, telling him to continue. We arrived at this awesome field in the forest. It was really beautiful. Then, we set up our tents, we made campfire, and then we had some free time before Iruka sensei would start his lecture. When he started, I suddenly felt very tired and wanted to sleep, but I somehow resisted it. I saw how the others were falling asleep. Then Mizuki appeared with someone. There was Mizuki, one more man and a woman. I didn't recognize which village they were from, but I remembered their hit I ate. There was musical note on it. After that, they split up the two strangers went for Iruka sensei, and Mizuki approached me. The note. I don't remember such a village maybe a new one. Here is in thought. I see. What happened next? Dorito thought a bit whether tell him or not. He decided to tell him he trusted the old Hokage after all and he didn't want to lie to him. Ajayasan, promise you won't tell anyone what I'm about to tell you. Promise her I will leave this village. Naruto said with serious expression. Hiruzen was a bit shocked at such a statement. I promise. But would you really leave? And I doubt you could do that. Dorito just grinned. Well, if I can escape Anbu after my pranks, escaping the village wouldn't be that hard, would it? The old Hokage looked at Naruto with amusement. But it was true, if Naruto could escape Anbu, then leaving village wouldn't be that hard either. You're right, it wouldn't be that hard. But would you do it? Of course not. I just said that so you would promise and realize how serious what I'm about to say is. Even after everything this village did to me, this is still my home and I love it. Naruto said with a bright smile. Anbu, which were hiding nearby and guarding the Hokage, sweat dropped. This kid. You're very sneaky, you know that. Hiruzen said with a sigh. Yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, and place a privacy seal around the room and tell your Anbu to leave. 
Now both Anbu in the area and the Hokage were surprised. They were surprised because some first-year academy brat could sense them, although they had suppressed and masked their chakra. Overcoming his shock, the Hokage asked, I don't even know how you sense the Anbu, but I believe it's something to do with what you're gonna tell me, right? After receiving a nod, he continued, is it so important? Naruto's face was very serious, and he had that face only when something really serious happened. Yes, it is. Besides, I completely trust you, but not Anbu. I don't want any rumors to spread. After thinking a bit, Hiruzen nodded and signaled the Anbu to leave. After a second, the tension in the air was lighter. The Jaisen, there, in the corner, he pointed at the far right corner of the room as one more Anbu. I told you, I can sense their chakra. Once again, the Hokage was surprised, but he just lifted his hand, signaling the last Anbu to leave. Then he made some hand seals and room walls flashed blue, before returning to normal, indicating that the privacy seal was now set. Now tell me, what was so important that happened? Hokage asked gently. Right. When Mizuki approached me, he started to talk some nonsense. Then, I saw how Ruka sensei was being beaten and how everyone was laying there, helpless. It appeared Mizuki was after me and Hinata for some reason. When I heard that, I was very angry, and then someone offered me power and I accepted it. Suddenly I started feeling angrier and my body moved by instinct. I I K killed Mizuki with a stab from my hand to his heart. A and then I I killed that W woman. Naruto answered, tears forming in his eyes. He had killed three people that day. A am I a mindless K Kai killer? Am I really the D demon of everyone talks about? Hiruzen, again, was a bit shocked when he heard about someone talking in Naruto's mind and offering him power. Kaiubi and those damn villagers, still calling him names, even after I forbade it he thought with a scowl on his face. Hiruzen then calmly asked tell me, Naruto. Why did you kill them? Naruto looked at Hokage with teary eyes and said to protect my friends, of course. When I saw my classmates laying there and Aruka being beaten, I remembered how Aruka sensei once said to me, you can become even more powerful if you have precious people to protect. That's why I accepted that power in the first place. I see. Now tell me, did you enjoy killing? Hiruzen asked. I don't know. I mean, I felt nothing when I killed them, but after my small frenzy disappeared, I realized what I did. It was H horrible. I killed so someone. I Kai killed my C sensei Naruto answered with small sobs in the end. The Hokage put his hands on Naruto's shoulders gently, with a warm smile, which showed how much he cared for Naruto, said, don't cry, Naruto. You did the right thing. Mizuki betrayed us and our village. He wanted to hurt your friends and classmates, as well as Aruka. Kami knows what would have happened if you hadn't been there. The most important thing was that you didn't enjoy it and that you felt sorry for the actions you had to perform. It means you won't become a mindless killer. You also did it for the right reasons. But remember, when you become a ninja and go on missions, you will have to kill in order to complete the mission. Just remember, you do it for right reasons. Naruto's sobs became quieter, and he hugged the Hokage T. Thanks, the Jaisen. Your words mean a lot to me. No problem, Naruto. Remember that I will always support you. But I believe your story doesn't end like that there's something more to it, right? You didn't tell me what happened to the third person. Right. After I K killed the woman, I... And so he told the Hokage everything that happened including his new bloodline and Kaiubi, though he didn't mention that Kaiubi told him who his father was. After Naruto finished retelling what happened, old Saratobi sat there silently, staring at Naruto stupidly and blankly for about one or two minutes. Then. What? shouted Hokage. So let me get this straight. You heard Kaiubi, it was evil and you accepted its power. Then you got new chakra and it mixes with your own. Then your new chakra heals Kaiubi's mind, and it happens that Kaiubi is not evil, after that you find out that you have the Rinnegan, and shout I mention, an evolved one, because you've been chosen by Kami to help this world, or so the Kaiubi says. Then Kaiubi offers to train you because of some unknown mission. After that, you activate your Rinnegan in your mindscape and something happens. Am I right so far? Naruto sheepishly smiled and rubbed back of his head in embarrassment. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. I need sake. I'm getting too old for this the Hokage muttered. Can you show me? Understanding what the Ajayasin wants, Naruto closed his eyes, channeled some chakra to his eyes, and thought Rinnegan. And then opened his eyes, showing the Hokage his Rinnegan with two slits around his pupils. While Hiruzen stared at Naruto's Rinnegan with an open mouth, Naruto examined his surroundings. He couldn't believe how well he could see, he could see everything in much better detail. Naruto then saw flower pots near the window, which was at the end of the room, and tried to focus on the leaf. Slowly, he could see more and more detail on the leaf two drops of water from the morning dew, green veins running along the leaf. After two seconds he could also see a small dust layer on the leaf and a small bug running there. He then lost his concentration when the Hokage called for him. 
Naruto your right eye slits are slowly spinning. What are you doing? Huh? Oh, I was focusing on the flower over there. He then pointed at the flower, after some seconds I could see almost all the details on the leaf, even the dust and a small bug. And you said my right eye? I think my right eye gives me the ability to see further. Maybe there's something more to it. I hope Kaiubi will find out. Naruto finished and deactivated his Rinnegan just by stopping the flow of chakra to his eyes. Somehow, it was easier to manipulate chakra in his body than it was before when he did tree walking. Right. I don't really like the idea of you being trained by Kaiubi or talking with him, but I will trust you. Itachi, the Anbu who was watching you, said that your chakra cloak changed and wasn't radiating any more bloodlust. Your story explains why. So I will trust you. Hokage said. Um, if you already knew everything, why did you ask? Naruto asked, curious. Then he got it. Oh, wait. Don't answer. You asked because you wanted to see how everything happened from my point of view and to fill in some holes from Itachi-sen's report, right? That is correct, Naruto. I'm impressed. One week ago you couldn't get it so fast. Hokage replied. I think it has something to do with my Rinnegan. When I found out Kaiubi was sealed inside me, I wasn't so sad about it as I thought I would be. I just accepted it. In my opinion, the Rinnegan somehow boosted my intelligence, though I'm not sure. I still need some time to think about everything Kaiubi said to me. Naruto said. I see. Then I will leave you. I have to return to my duties. You will stay here for two more days and then return back to the academy. Hokage said as he stood up. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. I approve of this training, but when you become a genin, you will show me your skill and what you've learned. Understood. Yes, Ajayasan. See you later. Naruto said as he laid back in bed and went to sleep. The Hokage just smiled and left the hospital, returning to the tower to resume his duties. To be more precise, to be tortured by damn paperwork. Again. Village, somewhere near Kaminari no Kuni borderland. It was deep night in a small village near Kaminari no Kuni, lightning country, borderland. The full moon shone in all its glory, illuminating lone streets with its mysterious light. You could hear some wolf pack, hidden near the forest shadows, howling at the moon and ready to hunt their unsuspecting prey. Most of the villagers were already asleep, their homes embraced in darkness, dreaming about various things. Though some houses still had their lights on. And one of these houses was the Tsukiko clan's main building. The Tsukiko clan was a very ancient clan with a very rare bloodline and summoning contract. Why were they rare? Because only once in 400 to 500 years a single member of clan can awaken their ancient bloodline, and only this one person can sign their sacred summoning contract. The bloodline was very strong, so strong it could cease wars or heal injuries, it could summon souls to aid allies or rain death on their enemies. In order to awaken the bloodline, one needed to meet various conditions. One may think that one of these conditions is high emotional or physical pain, but that's not true. At least, not completely. The condition is unknown. Each member who ever awakened the bloodline did it in different ways one suffered emotional pain, the other suffered high physical pain, while someone else got it out of the blue. But the last member, who had this bloodline, died 1500 years ago. No one knows why the bloodline had suddenly disappeared, but it is the reason why this clan is now extinct. The last two members of this clan, a girl and her grandfather remained on their sacred ground, in their home, their village which they built. It was a rather small village too. They say the bloodline has disappeared, that it's nothing but a myth. But they are wrong. The ancient power is going to be awakened again. By the sole survivor of the said clan. The main clan hall was lit by many candles on the walls. The room wasn't bright, but it was enough to see. This room was sacred and was used only in important clan events, like meetings and deciding clan or clan members' fates. And today, or rather tonight, was an important event for one girl. In the middle of the hall was a large bed, surrounded by candles. In the bed laid an old man, covered with silver-colored blankets. He had short gray hair, and his face had many wrinkles, indicating his old age. It looked like he was in his early 70s, but he looked sick and dying. Near the old man, next to the bed, was a young girl. She had a beautiful face, narrow eyebrows, deep brown eyes with black pupils, a small but beautiful nose and thin lips. She had long, light brown hair, which reached a bit past her shoulder blades and bangs hanging down on either side of her face to frame her beautiful face. Although she was only nine years old, she was beautiful. The girl was on her knees, her face buried in her palm, crying. Why is she crying? because her only relative, her grandfather will die within some minutes. Alice Chan, the old man addressed her granddaughter with weak voice, why are you crying? Alice, whose full name was Alicia Tsukiko, lifted her head, showing her red cheeks and eyes, answered with sorrow and anger. Sorrow for obvious reason, but anger for such a stupid question, why am I crying? How could I not when all my clan and family has died and you're the only one left? 
How could I not cry when you're going to die too, and I'll be left all alone. She finished and buried her face in her palms again and started to cry louder, no longer capable of keeping it in. I'm old, Alice Chan. You should know members of our clan usually die about this age. The old man said, then he paused as if thinking about something. After minute of silence, except Alicia's crying, the old man continued as serious as he could in his condition, listen, Alicia. Do you know the prophecy of our clan? Alicia lifted her head, hearing how serious her Ajayasin was. She just nodded, she knew about the prophecy from the age of six. The man then continued. I believe with all my heart the prophecy is about you, Alice Chan the man coughed several times. Be but it's just that, a prophecy. It is as good as a myth. She countered. Alicia. The old man sternly said. Listen carefully. I believe in you. You heard me. I believe. In. You. He said, emphasizing each his word, even if you will do not awaken it, I believe you will do as the prophecy says, because that is my last wish. Seeing his granddaughter's widened eyes, he reached into his pocket in his pants and took out a key. It looked really old, and it had some kind of wing-like pattern on its bow. Here, take this key. Just in case you're the one. You know where the sacred chamber is. He said as he gave Alicia the key, which she accepted with trembling hands. He continued from now on, your heir and sole survivor to our clan. Good luck Alicia. I love you. More tears started to form in girl's eyes. She squeezed the key and put her hands on her chest, where heart should be, as if it was the dearest thing left for her. De thank why you, Ajayasin. I will de do as why you ask. I ll love why you tt too, she said as she hugged her grandfather for last time. When she let him go, she saw him smiling and glowing. Thank you. Be the Val cough Kiri like some of our predecessors were. He quietly said, as he was engulfed in yellow and white light and slowly started to evaporate. Although when someone dies it is sad, but it was beautiful. In five or six seconds, he was gone. Dead. But Alicia knew better. Her clan didn't just die, and the way they died is not normal on its own. When the person in their clan dies, they connect with nature around, as if they were creations of nature themselves. When the last particle of her deceased grandfather disappeared, she was broken, but at the same time you could see the strong determination in her eyes. I won't let you down, Ajayasin. She said quietly. Light started to form around her, but she didn't notice it. I will fulfill your wish and heal this world. She said louder, her voice full of determination, still oblivious to the sudden light around her, which was getting bigger and brighter. Suddenly she stood up and as if trying to convince someone, shouted for I am Alicia Tsukiko, heir to the Tsukiko clan and its last member. After those words were spoken, she noticed the light around herself. She gasped, but it was too late. The light flared, illuminating all the village through compound's windows, making the night as light as the day. It kept for some seconds, then the light died down. After the light was gone, Alicia stood there for some seconds, her eyes wide in shock, after which she fell, unconscious. But something had changed though her hair changed from light brown to light blonde and was now reaching down to her lower back. Some of the villagers who were still awake saw the flare and thought with awe. The Valkyrie is born. Alicia's dream. She was flying or floating above the village. The village was huge and almost all the population looked happy. Why almost? Because there was one place which was filled with some kind of grey aura. The aura itself radiated hate. When she looked closely at that part of the village, she saw a six-year-old blonde boy walking on the street. What caught her attention was his shadow it had nine tendrils, which looked like tails. The boy himself radiated a calm and bright aura, while the civilians around him radiated hate and the grey aura towards him. One of the civilians even took a tomato and wanted to throw it at the boy, but was stopped by another civilian who whispered something to the first one. Although it was just a whisper and Alicia was very far from there, she could hear what he said. Don't anger the demon. Then she saw how everything started losing color wherever the blonde kid went, various insults thrown his way. Demon. Scum. I will be brat. Get away from here. Why can't you just die? These were the most often used ones. But despite everything, the kid was smiling and radiating that small aura. And so she watched how the day went for the boy. When the day was finished and the boy went to sleep, Alicia was amazed how he kept going after everything the village did to him. She also pitied him. Poor kid. He is no older than six or seven and he has to endure so much. How can he keep going on after everything? He doesn't even have friends. How can he smile? Could I do the same? She thought, awed at the boy. Then, the scene changed. She was floating once again, above a large crater. There were many halls around, some large water puddles. She also saw mountains and forests in the background, but what terrified her the most was huge monster standing there. By huge, she meant huge like a mountain. She couldn't see any details of the monster, only its red eyes, which seemed familiar. She then looked below the monster and gasped. 
There, not very far away from the monster, stood the same boy from before, but this time he had nine red tails with orange tips swinging behind him. The boy turned and lifted his head and looked directly into Alicia's eyes. She gasped. His eyes were like she had never seen before ripple-like pattern around the blue slitted pupil with a red iris and purple sclera, it also had three white tomo around the pupil. Then she noticed the boy had some kind of crimson red pigment round his eyes. The monster let out a demonic and monstrous roar. Alicia screamed for him to run, but to no avail. Her warnings and screaming were silent. She then saw how the boy closed his eyes and how a single tear fell down. The monster then shot a large stream of black and purple flame at the boy, engulfing him. When the fire died down, she saw no one there. Only a burning crater. Alicia started to cry for boy's fate. It was so cruel. Alicia woke up in a cold sweat, panting, as if she had seen her worst nightmare. Well, she kind of did see a nightmare. Who was that boy? She thought. It looked and felt so real. Then, the pain returned to her body and once again, she was unconscious. Naruto's dream. At the same time, Naruto was dreaming a very familiar dream. It was a usual day when he was six years old, but this time he felt something unnatural. As if someone was watching him. But he paid it no attention, thinking it was the villagers. After he went to sleep, the scene changed. Now he was standing in large crater-like clearing, alone facing a huge monster. He couldn't see any details of it, only its eyes. They were red with some kind of lines in them. It looked dead familiar. He then felt, again, someone watching him, from above. He knew it wasn't civilians this time, because no one was around. He turned and lifted his head up and saw a girl no older than 9 or 10. He saw her long hair and her deep brown eyes along with rest of her face. Beautiful he thought. And then he heard a monster's roar. He knew this was the end. He saw how the girl was trying to say something, he saw how she was trying to scream, but to no avail. Probably wishing me a slow death, like everyone else. He then closed his eyes and felt how a single tear left his eye, as he remembered his life. Then, without pain or anything, he felt dead. Naruto woke up in a cold sweat, panting. This was a horrible nightmare. Who was that girl? And the monster? He thought, it looked so real. Then, he just turned around and went back to sleep, seeing it was still night and hoping he won't see the nightmare again. Somewhere in an unearthly place. It looked like endless darkness, filled with millions and millions of white dots, representing stars. You could also see a large globe, representing Earth itself. There was a woman of godly beauty, with long white hair, which seemed to glow, reaching her ankles. She had on a long, white dress which went past her feet. Said woman was radiating unworldly light around her. She was overlooking the Earth. A smile appeared on her face, as she said, her voice sounding like double echo this is the last time I intervene, Naruto, Alicia. For I believe I made the right choice and you won't make mistakes like the last ones. That said, she disappeared in a white flash. It has been a week since Naruto left the hospital. He now continues to go to the academy. On the first day of school after his discharge from the hospital, it was like hell to him. He received so much attention. Everyone was asking him questions about the incident, like, what happened there, why didn't he fall under the Jinjutsu, etc. He had to lie, saying that he didn't remember much and that everything was like looking through fog, but some kids, Shikofama Kofru, Saz Kofuk, knew he was lying, but decided not to press him on the matter. At least, for now. After that first day, class settled down, and then everything was like always boring lectures, Haruka's shouting, Sasuke's fangirls. And he still didn't contact the fox to talk about the training. Now, it was a peaceful Friday afternoon. The sun was shining, birds were chirping and other peaceful stuff was happening. Naruto was in the academy, sitting in his spot and daydreaming. I wonder why I can't enter my mindscape now. Naruto thought I hope that damn fox didn't lie about the training. I haven't heard anything from him for a week now. Suddenly a voice rang in his head hey, kid. You miss me? Naruto was so surprised he yelped. His classmates gave him a funny look and Aruka asked him, Naruto are you alright? Quickly regaining his composure, he sheepishly answered hi, Naruka-sensei. I was daydreaming and had a bad dream. Okay don't sleep in class, Naruto. Naruka admonished and returned to his lecture. After that, Naruto pretended to listen to the lecture, but in reality, he was having a chat with his inner fox. How can you talk with me? You said it's impossible to communicate outside the mindscape. Naruto mentally said. Long story short when you activated your Rinnegan in the mindscape and absorbed part of my chakra, several things happened to you. One of them is that we now have a mental link between each other and we can talk. About other things I will tell you tonight, in your mindscape. We will also discuss your training. Kai would be answered. Naruto grinned when he heard about training. Finally. Okay then. See you later. At night, in Naruto's mindscape. 
Before I tell you your training schedule, let me tell you about several things that happened to you when you absorbed my chakra with your tajutsu. When Naruto nodded and sat on the wet floor, it's not like he felt the water anyway, Kaiubi continued. You may think the chakra you absorbed increased your chakra reserves, but that's not true. First of all, it somehow created a mental link between us. This means we can now communicate with each other when we want, and also I can smell, see and hear what you can. Secondly, it somehow changed your body. No. Ayubi was interrupted by a shouting Naruto, what do you mean changed your body? I will look different now. What the hell? I. And now Naruto was interrupted by the growling Kaiubi. Stop interrupting me when I'm talking, Brad. It's annoying. Next time listen to what I have to say before asking questions, or I will ignore you for some months. Is that clear? Naruto gulped and quickly nodded. Sorry, Kaiubi-sensei. Ayubi merely nodded and continued as I was saying, nothing major. I looked into your body and saw some slight changes. According to what I've seen, your hair will now grow faster, you will receive back all the nutrition you've lost, meaning you will grow how you should have. By that I mean, you're a midget now because you eat only ramen. Your body doesn't get any required minerals for growth, that's why you're smaller than others. But it shouldn't be a problem now, just don't forget to eat healthy food. Also, your eyesight will be a bit better now to adjust to your dejutsu. That's everything I could find out. Any questions so far? When Naruto received permission to ask questions, he asked does that mean I will grow faster than others and won't be that small anymore? Kayubi rolled his eyes. Wasn't that what he said just now? No, you will not grow faster than others, your growth rate is returned to how it should have been. Yes, you won't be a midget anymore. Yada. Okay then, what about training? Naruto asked happily. Very well. Now listen carefully. For the next week after the academy, you will go to any free training ground. There, you will continue to master chakra control. Your Rinnegan allows you to control your chakra more easily, more smoothly, so it shouldn't be hard to master water walking in three days. Also, I will teach you Cage Bunch and No Jutsu, which will greatly increase your training speed and effectiveness. After you master Cage Bunch and, I will tell you your training schedule for the next five years. Questions. Um. How will a Bunch and increase my training speed? And why only for five years? Naruto asked suspiciously. It can't be true that simple Bunshin can do something like that. If it could, why has one used it? Ayubi just grinned, showing all its sharp and pointy teeth. You see, Cage Bunshin is not just a simple Bunshin technique. And I believe you are the only one who can effectively use it for training purposes. I will tell you more when I will start teaching it to you. Also, I recommend you spend the weekend finding and buying a simple training sword. It's for your training as well. Now, do as I said. If you get stuck in your water walking, I will give you some pointers, although I believe you will not need them. As to why for 5 years. Well, that's simple. After 5 years you will have become a genin, and you won't have much time for training. It doesn't mean you won't get any training at all. After a week, I will wait for you here, in your mindscape. Take care, kid. Before Naruto could ask or say something, he was pulled out from his mindscape by invisible force. Next day, Hokage office. Hey, Ajayasan. Naruto shouted as he entered the Hokage's office by kicking the door open. Tsuritobi sweat dropped. Hello, Naruto-kun. I see you're quite enthusiastic today. Care to explain what happened? He said as he gestured at Naruto to take a seat. Well, yeah. I will finally start my training. Also, I found out something interesting. Naruto said, entering his serious mode. The old Hokage raised an eyebrow and asked him. Well, before you tell me what you found out, mind explaining what sort of training you will be doing. Don't tell him about the cage bunshin. Kaiubi said, within his mind. Huh? Kaiubi? I thought you were sleeping. And why shouldn't I tell him? Naruto could feel Kaiubi rolling his eyes. I am don't sleep day and night and wake up only when you come here. I sleep like all humans do. It's strange though, me, a demon sleeping like a human HMPF. Kaiubi said with a small scowl. And then he remembered the other question. Uh, right. Don't tell him because cage bunshin is kinjutsu. Kinjutsu? Wow. You will teach me a kinjutsu am I that awesome? Naruto asked, stars in his eyes. Yeah, right. Your awesomeness is so great, it sometimes even blinds me. Kaiubi said with sarcasm, anyway, I'll explain later, as promised. And I keep my promises. But that said, Naruto could feel how Kaiubi disappeared from his mind. Everything happened in less than a minute, and Siratobi was still waiting for an answer. He even looked a bit worried. Naruto-kun, are you alright? I could swear I saw some sparkling stars in your eyes he said, with amused tone. Huh? Oh, sorry, Ajayasan. I just remembered what someone said about my training and I got excited. Naruto answered, emphasizing words someone. 
He knew there were Anbu listening and guarding the Hokage, and he didn't want them to hear about the Kaiubi. The Hokage understood Naruto meant Kaiubi by someone. So, what is your training? Well, for the next week I have to master tree and water walking, after that my sensei will give me a training schedule for the next five years. Naruto answered with a smile. Hmm. Interesting. And why only five years? Hokage curiously asked. Because after five years, when I'm 13, I will become a genin, and I won't have much time for training. Naruto answered honestly. He really hoped it wouldn't be that bad, and there will still be time for training. Yeah. Naruto thinks only about training. No social life whatsoever. Fair enough. So, what was it that you found out? Naruto then regained his serious composure and looked around the room. Then he found what he was searching for a picture of Yondame, his father, hanging on the right wall. There were also the pictures of the Shadame, the Nidame and Sandame. He walked closer to it and inspected the picture of his father. When Saratobi saw where Naruto was looking and what he was inspecting, sweat bullets appeared on his face, but he tried to look as calm as possible and waited. I hope it's not exactly what he found out. He nervously thought. Naruto then took the picture of the Yandame from the wall, turned to the Hokage, and held it next to his face, so both faces were next to each other. Fair to explain? He seriously asked. Hokage widened his eyes and then returned to normal. How long? He asked. Since the incident. Naruto honestly answered, indicating who exactly told him such information. It's true, isn't it? When he received a slow nod from the Hokage, he continued I can't understand how I didn't notice it earlier. All the villagers can't or don't want to notice it either. The same golden blonde, spiky hair, same ocean blue eyes, almost the same facial structure, mine being a bit rounder. Hate indeed blinds people. He let out a sigh and placed the picture back in its place. Just one more question. Is it true that my father wanted me to be seen as a hero, as Athi Jailer to Kaiubi? Tsuritobi also sighed and nodded. Yes. That's true. Unfortunately, these damn villagers won't respect his wishes. He answered, leaking out a bit of killing intent and frustration. When he stopped leaking it, he continued. Seriously everyone loved the Yandame, but they don't respect his wishes, nor do they believe in his sealing skills. How far has this village fallen? He finished by asking the rhetorical question to himself. Naruto just smiled and answered, it doesn't matter how far it's fallen. If my father's last wish was for me to be seen as a hero, then so be it. I will try my hardest to prove I'm not Kaiubi's incarnation and will help this village to regain its will of fire. One way or another, it doesn't matter. That's a promise. He said, his voice and eyes full of determination, a warm and calming aura leaking from him, as he spoke his words, making everyone present in the room feel some warmth and peace, making them believe in the blonde. The Hokage looked at Naruto with a proud smile. Even after everything the village did to him, he still wanted to prove himself. Naruto's will of fire burns brightly, and I believe sooner or later he will pass it on to the village. The Hokage thought. The Anbu in the room. When Naruto took the picture and turned to the Hokage, the Anbu were a bit confused at why he did that. When Naruto spoke and pointed how how similar they were, it hit them like a ton of bricks. No way. That rat is Yandame Sama's son. One of them thought with shocked eyes. It's not like anyone noticed it anyway, he had a mask on. He, he is sensei's son. Hmm if you think about it, they look similar. Way too similar. The dog mask wearing Anbu thought. It was none other than Hada Kakashi. When the Hokage confirmed it, they almost all fell from their hiding spots. Everyone had similar thoughts. No way. They are indeed similar. And to think that no one noticed it. When Naruto began his little speech, all of them felt on growing respect for the blonde, the calming aura doing part of the job, wink dot all of them started to change their opinion about him. He was indeed strong-willed. I'm so proud of you, Naruto. I truly believe you will succeed. Now, is there something else? The Hokage asked. Naruto smiled and answered thanks, Ajayasan. Yes, there's actually one more thing I wanted to ask. Can you give any suggestions on a weapon shop where I can buy a training sword without the tripled prices? The Hokage raised an eyebrow and asked him to elaborate on what he meant. Huh? Didn't you know? Almost every grocery store either kicks me out or triples the prices for me, saying we don't sell to demons. And those that do let me in just sell me rotten food. Have you never wondered why I'm smaller than others? Naruto asked in amused tone. Really, the Hokage had no idea about what happens in his village. When the Hokage heard this, his killer intent leaked out to the whole village. Some civilians started to sweat a bit, knowing there was trouble coming their way. When Saratobi calmed down, he said come, Naruto. Let's pay a visit some soon to bankrupt grocery stores. Then I will also show you a weapon shop where I'm sure you will be welcomed. With that, both of them left the office, and Naruto had a mischievous smile. Also, the Hokage really was getting old. 
he was completely distracted by Naruto's knowledge about his father and totally forgot about the Anbu who were in his office and heard everything. Let's just say, Naruto will now have a bit more protectors and rumors will start to spread. Time skip, one week. A week has since passed and Naruto felt great. That day when he and Suratobi visited some grocery stores, his life became a bit more easier. Why? Because the old Hokage threatened the shop owners if they ever sold rotten food for triple price again, they will mysteriously become bankrupt. And if Naruto was not treated like any other paying customer, not only will they become mysteriously bankrupt, all their money will go to Naruto's account for emotional and physical compensation for all the things they did to him. Now all the grocery stores were nicer to him, although he still noticed the hateful glares. Also, he noticed how some citizens, to be precise high-ranking shinobi, like Jounin's, were looking at him. Those weren't hateful glares, but instead the look of realization and respect. Those were very, very few, and Naruto couldn't figure out the reason for those looks. Within a week Naruto had mastered both tree and water walking. Actually, he mastered both of them in two days. He was surprised how easily he did that. Kaiubi told him that Naruto was talented at chakra control, despite its difficult, and his new dejutsu just increased that control. The rest of the five days he spent increasing his chakra control, thereby increasing his chakra amount as well, also doing more physical workouts. His hair did grow a bit, but was still spiky. Now he was standing in front of the cage, containing the fox, in his mindscape, awaiting further instructions on his training. I see you finished your training, Kit. Good job. Though I will admit, I was surprised when you mastered both tree and water walking in two days. You are talented if only the teachers at the academy would see that. Now, about your training. In the next two days I want you to learn cage bunshin. Before I will explain how it works, do you have any questions? Kaiubi asked. Naruto now knew that interrupting the fox was a bad thing to do because it pissed Kaiubi off. He now only asked questions and spoke when spoken to. The lord of the demons acted like a king after all. Yeah. I remember you said it will help my training. How? Naruto asked. Ah, well, the beauty of this technique is that you get all the memories of the clones when they dispel. Meaning Kaiubi said, allowing Naruto to finish the sentence. When Naruto saw the Kaiubi's look, he understood what he wanted you will get the memory of all the training. So if I create two clones, they will cut my training time twice, meaning I can learn jutsu faster. Awesome. But why has no one used this kind of training if it's so effective? Naruto asked, excited fire burning in his eyes. That's right Kit. Cage Bunshin is not kinjutsu for nothing. It requires a lot of chakra to create at least one clone. Only cage level shinobi can create some shadow clones and remain in good fighting condition. Also, I believe no one else can use this kind of training because of the mental feedback and exhaustion they will get. But you, Kit, can create hundreds of them because of your large chakra capacity, and the mental exhaustion will not affect you that much, thanks to your natural healing abilities, which is also enhanced by my chakra. It means you're one of only a very few Piapur capable of this kind of training. Kaiubi answered. He could swear he saw some sparkling stars in the blonde's eyes. Kaiubi found that amusing. Kaiubi then continued to explain how Cage Bunshin worked and all its possibilities. After that, Kaiubi showed him required the hand seals. Naruto found it very funny and strange on how Kaiubi performed the hand seals. Foxes shouldn't be able to do them, right? Also, Kaiubi explained that the more Naruto poured chakra into the jutsu, the more clones he will produce. In addition, Kaiubi explained that Naruto will have truly mastered the technique when he could summon clones without the hand seals. Naruto already knew this was definitely going to be his favorite technique. After the lecture was finished, Naruto bid his teacher farewell and went back to his training. Time skip, two days. Naruto stood in the middle of training field 43. It was next to training field 44, also known as the forest of death. From time to time you could hear some roaring and hissing from the forest, which was why almost no one used this training field, saying it unnerved them. Naruto crossed his his fingers, performing the necessary seals for cage bunch and no juts. He then collected as much chakra as he could, channeled it through the seal, and shouted Taju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. There was a large puff of smoke. When the smoke died down, you could see an entire army of Naruto's. The original Naruto looked around in awe. He had created approximately 300 clones and felt a bit winded. He used a minute to catch his breath and then ordered all of his clones to do chakra control exercises. When he received hi, boss. From all of them, he decided to relax. Also, he just wanted to check if what Kaiubi had said was indeed true. At the end of the day, he dispelled all of his clones at once. He shouldn't have done that though, because once they poofed out of existence, Naruto fell to ground and held his head, moaning. It was painful when he received all the memories and feedback from the clones at once. Next time I'll order them to dispel in groups of 10 or 20 in 2 minute intervals. He murmured under his breath. 
later that night, in his mindscape. So, I've learned the simple cage bunshin and tajuu cage bunshin. What now? Naruto asked, excited about his training. Take it easy, kit. And good job learning those jutsus. What's the maximum number of clones you can create? Kayubi asked. Well, today I could make about 300 clones before I felt a bit exhausted. After about one minute of catching my breath, I felt a lot better. Naruto answered. Kayubi widened his eyes, apparently shocked. 300 clones. It's impossible for an 8-year-old to make that amount, even with his chakra reserves. I guess his new silver chakra is more potent, thus making the jutsu stronger, and his Rinnegan gives him the passive ability to channel his chakra more easily and smoothly, allowing him to make powerful jutsu while conserving chakra. He can get strong in no time. Thought Kaiubi as he grinned, excited. Hey, Kaiubi sensei you alright? You seemed like you spaced out for a minute. Naruto asked. Oh, uh, sorry. I just didn't expect you to make so many clones at such a young age, now let me think about your training schedule. Kaiubi answered. And that's how the next few minutes passed Naruto sitting in the water, waiting for Kaiubi's answer, and Kaiubi thinking about the schedule. Okay, now listen carefully. Kaiubi finally said. For week 1, every day you will create 200 clones. You will divide them in 5 groups. Group 1 will learn my special Kitsune Claw to Jutsu. Group 2 will learn my special Kitsune Blade Kinjutsu. Group 3 will learn and practice Fuiten, Suiten and Raiten and Jutsu, as well as your Tajutsu. Group 4 will continue on your chakra control, increasing your overall control and amount of chakra you will have. Also, Group 4 will do an elemental chakra training. Group 5 will study. And by study I mean go to library and read books on history, tactics etc. And finally the real you will do physical training. Any questions so far? Naruto was a bit awed by all the things he is going to do, and he couldn't wait for when his training will start. Yes, actually. Why do you have special tojutsu and kinjutsu styles you're a huge fox, one swing of your tail can cause tornadoes? He asked. Ayubi shrugged his shoulders, well, as much as the fox could. Remember when we first met and I told you how something happened and my mind was healed. He then saw how Naruto was deep in thought, but after some seconds Kaiubi received a nod from the blonde, so he continued well, this something happened thousand of years ago. When villages weren't formed yet, I found a deeply wounded fox in the forest near Hai no Kuni. Rikidu made me like a fox, so I had a fox's instincts, and seeing another fox in pain was painful for me. So I decided to help. I took the fox and infused it with a large amount of my chakra. Back then, my chakra wasn't demonic, it was pure and brought life, but it was still dangerous to pour my chakra into other beings. I still don't know how that fox survived, but imagine my surprise when I woke up and saw the same fox, but with two tails and a bit larger. It was the first half-demon, half-animal. Thousands of years passed, the fox made it and brought kits to life. Slowly, these kits were becoming more and more demonic, gaining more and more intelligence, until they become full-time demons like me. But the difference was they could never reach my power as well as they would never go insane or mad like I can. In other words, thousands years of later, a fox clan appeared and I was their head. After that I decided to to create my own summoning contract and brought all the foxes to the summoning realm. Why I did I do so? Because of my mission. When they heard what my mission was, the foxes agreed, obviously, to help me and over time develop these two styles to aid their summoners. After another thousands of years they created and developed their own sage mode and sage style. When Kaiubi finished, he let out a sigh off, I really hate these tell me your past questions they are usually so long. Naruto looked at Fox with the excitement and awe. To think that Kaiubi, the great demon lord had its own fox clan. How awesome was that? But then Naruto remembered something well, that's just awesome. But what is this mission you speak so much about? Kaiubi grinned well, it's simple. When Rikidu created us, he gave us a mission if we are sealed in a person who had the same eyes as his, we are required to help and aid them. That's why before you leave, I will give you a summoning contract to sign. Any questions? Hmm, that makes sense. I can't figure out how Rikidu-sama knew about any new disaster coming to the world, but it makes sense how he would want you to help me. After all, you've got thousands and thousands of years of experience and knowledge, as well as a basic information and understanding of his dejutsu. Anyway, I don't have any questions, just a request. Naruto said, with a serious expression, although you still could see some sparks from the stars in his eyes. Hmm. And I train my dejutsu on my own, without using clones. Before Kaiubi could ask him to elaborate, Naruto continued it's just unfair and seems like cheating if I learn everything using clones. That's why I want to train my bloodline without using clones. Also, it didn't sound like I will have anything else to do, aside from physical training. Well, fair enough. It will also be easier to instruct you. Right, let's continue on with the training schedule. 
for week 2, group 1 will continue to learn tojutsu as well as spar with each other, the same goes for group 2 with kenjutsu. Group 3 will learn and practice katen and doten and jutsu. Group 4 will work on your kunai and shuriken throwing and dodging skills. Group 5 will continue to study in the library. And you will do physical workouts as well as dojutsu training. Week 1 will be first, after that will be week 2, and after that one, you will do week 1 schedule again and so on. Questions. Yes. When do we start and what about weekends? Kayubi grinned. He had started to like Naruto's excitement for training. We start on Thursday. And on weekends you can just do physical workouts in the morning and relax for the rest of the day. When he finished speaking, Kayubi placed its paws in Ram's seal, it looked weird, and a scroll poofed into existence out of nowhere. It was strange how Kayubi could summon things in his mindscape Kayubi tossed the scroll to Naruto and spoke bite your thumb and write your full name on the scroll and leave your fingerprint under it. Naruto opened the scroll and found it to be completely blank. It didn't surprise him though, as he was the first summoner ever. He did as he was told and wrote his full name in kanji and left the fingerprint. After he completed the procedure, the scroll closed and poofed back to its homeworld. Good job, Naruto. I will show you the required hand seals later. Now it's time for you to wake up. Soon we will start your training. Oh, and I want you to continue to act as a dope. Remember, deception is a ninja's greatest weapon. If people underestimate you, it means easier victory. Kaiubi said as he grinned. Naruto didn't want to show off anyway, and acting as a dope was fun too. And he just knew this training would cause him a lot of pain. But Alicia, a week earlier, after the night she got a bloodline. It was late afternoon now, the sun was high in the sky, shining brightly, and its rays were warming up the small village. Alicia woke up and moaned, her entire back was hurting. She shuffled slowly to her bathroom, did all her ablutions, and then took a shower. She wasn't even surprised at her new hair, because she knew that some things change in the body when the bloodline is awakened. After that, she went back to the main hall and remembered everything that happened how her grandfather died and how she awakened her Valkyrie bloodline. She then remembered the key and secret chamber. She went to the far right corner of the room, bit her thumb and smeared some of the blood on the wall. It looked completely random, but Alicia knew better. After that, a red and white seal array appeared on the wall, indicating she was allowed to enter. Then, the seal disappeared and the wall lifted up, revealing a hidden passage going downstairs. When Alicia got to the basement, the corridor there was very narrow with various line patterns in different thickness and color, running along the wall, until they reached a door at the end of the corridor. The young girl went closer to the door and noticed how beautiful it was. It was a silver door with a beautiful woman drawn on it. The woman wore some kind of long battle dress, held a wide sword, and she had a pair of angel-like wings behind her. Alicia really liked how the woman looked. So that's what our bloodline looks like. I only heard the stories and never saw the pictures. She thought. Alicia then took out the key and inserted it in the keyhole and turned it several times until she heard a click sound. The door started to glow until it vanished. She went inside the room and couldn't help but stare in awe at everything there was. There was a bookshelf with various scrolls and books in it, there also was a chest with money and various weapons like swords, bows, kunai, shuriken and some ancient weapons. At the end of the room was a mannequin. The mannequin was dressed in beautiful garb. It consisted of a long, white dress, with a slit starting from its hip on the right and going down until it reached mid-shin, fully uncovering the right leg, but hiding the left one. The dress was made up of pure white feathers. One over the dress was a small, dark brown leather vest held in place by tiny ropes. The whole costume also came with very long dark brown leather boots, which were also made in the vest style. Two dot said costume was completed by leather arm guards with small metal plates in it, which nearly reached the mannequin's elbows. Wow. It looks beautiful. I bet that's the costume previous Valkyries wore. It will be too big for me right now, though. I will have to wait till I grow up a bit. Alicia said to herself. Little did she know that there were seals placed on the costume that allows it to shrink in size in order for it to fit the wearer, as well as a seal which always keeps it clean. Behind the mannequin was a large metal plate with engraved text. It will be harsh in the world Hortum runs Riffian Axe Age, a sword age shields are riven for the world goes headlong. A no man will have mercy on another. A and then the last Valkyrie will be born. Her pure soul will help the man with sacred power and eyes to heal the land. The prophecy now I just need to find this man. She murmured as she read the prophecy. She then carefully took the clothes off the mannequin and sealed it in a scroll. It's a good thing that she learned from her Ajayasin how to use sealing scrolls. She continued to pick various jutsu scrolls that will help her in her training, as well as some money. When she had finished taking everything she needed, she left the room. The door reappeared with a transparent white flash, and you could hear a click sound, indicating the door was now was closed. Alicia left her clan house and walked towards the village's market in order to buy some supplies for her journey. 
As she walked on the street, she noticed how everyone was giving her looks of awe and respect. Everyone already knew she was the last Valkyrie. After an hour, she was standing near the village gates. She turned around and saw that almost all the villagers had come to bid their farewell and wish her good luck on her journey. Good luck on your journey, Valkyrie-sama. Some random woman said. Don't forget about us. Another one said. We will always remember and cheer for you. A young man said. Thanks, guys. Alicia said, tears forming in her eyes. She was leaving her home village after all, but she didn't want to look weak in front of so many people, so she just wiped her tears and with a bright smile said I won't let you down. Your support means a lot to me. As the people in village cheered her on, she slowly began to walk away from her village. Her first destination was some village near Kumo. She tried to avoid large shinobi villages, fearing someone will find out about her bloodline and force her to become their ninja. She couldn't stay in her home as well because she had a mission to train, gain knowledge of the world and to find that one man she needed to help. With determination in her eyes and a clear target in mind, she set out on her journey. Time skip. One year. It was a Sunday evening and Naruto, now nine years old, was walking in the silent Kanoha streets, relaxing and enjoying the fresh evening air, as well as thinking about the past year. A lot had changed. First, his appearance. Nothing major there, but still something noticeable. He grew a little, as Kayubi had said, and his hair grew longer. His hair now almost reached his shoulders, but was still spiky. Secondly, Naruto got to know Kayubi better. The fox seemed to be friendly as long as you didn't interrupt him while he was speaking. For some reason, it really annoyed him. Also, they could consider each other acquaintances at best. They didn't talk much outside of the training, but they gained mutual respect for each other. They would sometimes crack some jokes, but those moments were very rare. Also, Kaiubi was a ruthless sensei. When Naruto got too tired to do something or failed at something, Kaiubi would always somehow taunt him, scold and trick him into continuing. As for his training, he could now compare himself with the levels of a high gen and low chuan and level shinobi. His chakra control was amazing for a ninja with very large chakra reserves. His ninjutsu training was great as well. Kaiubi guessed Naruto had a natural talent for ninjutsu and chakra control, like it was in his blood. Also, he was smarter, spending days in the library did its job. His tojutsu was okay. He loved the style, but it was hard to master without an opponent, and although Cage Bunshin had limitless potential, had its as limits. If that makes sense. The Kitsune Claw style relied on fast movements and quick counterattacks. Also, this style didn't use fists, instead it used fingers for quick and painful stabs, a person sends chakra to all his fingers and reinforces them, making them harder and stronger. Ayubi said that with excellent chakra control and good training, Naruto would be able to extend his chakra from his fingers and make chakra claws, or when using his chakra cloak, his nails would be longer and sharper on their own, which is also part of this style. But they still couldn't figure out how to bring out Kaiubi's chakra to make chakra cloak. Something was preventing it. His Kenjutsu was okay as well, just like Kitsune Claw, Kitsune Blade relied mostly on parrying, counterattacking and quick stabs. Both of these styles relied on speed, and that's why Naruto now had an addition to his dream he wanted to be as fast or even faster than his dad. No, he wanted to be just like his father, if not better acknowledged, loved and strong. He wanted to be a hero just like the Yandane was. His Dejutsu training was going well too, but much slower than everything else, because Naruto didn't use clones to train. He and Kaiubi discovered a very interesting ability of the right eye. They called it marking now Naruto was working on his gravity manipulation and increasing the number of points Naruto can mark. Furthermore, he had a good relationship with foxes. Some weeks after signing the contract, he tried to summon a fox. After some tries, he managed to summon two simple, one-tailed foxes. One was yellow with white tip at the end of its tail, and the other was black with blue tip. After they were summoned, both of them wanted to attack Naruto, but when they saw the whisker marks and felt the presence of Kaiubi, they put two and two together and changed their minds. Surprisingly, they could talk. Flashback. We're sorry, host of the Kaiubi. This is the first time we've been summoned. Imagine our surprise to appear here while in the middle of our dinner. The yellow fox said. Wow. They talk. Naruto shouted, clearly surprised. Idiot. I think I told you all the foxes are intelligent and can speak. Kaiubi said within Naruto's mind. You told me they are intelligent, but you never mentioned they could talk. The blonde answered. Oh right whatever. The fox replied and cut the link. Sometimes, the fox could really be annoying. Uh, right, sorry about that. So, what are your names and why are you both here? Aren't summoned supposed to appear alone? Naruto asked. My name is Yara and her name is Yoru. Answered the yellow fox. The speaking actually sounded like the fox was yipping out the words. 
it was really strange, but for some reason Naruto could clearly understand them. To answer your second question, you're right, usually summons appears alone. But we're not your usual type of summons. You see, we have different classes and ranks in our world. They are determined by the number of our tails. Usually one tails and two tails are scouts and medics. Me and Yara are scouts, and scouts always appear in pairs in order to boost our effectiveness of information gathering. Yoru answered. Her voice sounded more feminine than Yara's. Naruto was listening very carefully, trying not to miss any details. Oh, I see. That's an interesting system there. Can you tell me more? He asked. Um, not today. As it is our first time in this world, we would like to explore. By the way, what's your name? Yara said. Great two scout foxes searching for adventure in a foreign world he thought. The name's Yuzumaki Namak is Naruto. But you can just call me Naruto. Naruto said as he gave a good guy pose and thumbs up. Okay then, Naruto-sama. While we're in this world, do you have any requests? I mean, we're scouts after all. Yoru said with small foxish smile. Please forget about honorifics, I hate them. Naruto said as he put his hand on his chin. He looked to be deep in thought before his eyes gleamed with bright light yes. I actually have a request for you too. As I will become a genin in the near future, I want you to gather all the information you can on possible jounin senseis. In case we're fighting, wherever, training or a test, I would really like an edge in battle. In the shinobi world, information is very important. Naruto said, before muttering well, that's what I read anywhere right, do you know of our ninja system? Of course, Naruto-sama. We're being educated on the human world and we know how to tell the difference between the ranks. Is that all, Naruto-sama? Yoru said, emphasizing the Sama. Why? Just to annoy Naruto. Naruto's eyebrow twitched. You're doing that on purpose, right? He didn't receive an answer. His eyebrow twitched even more. Whatever, that's all. And with that, the foxes were gone. Flashback end. Naruto sighed. Although foxes were friendly, they were tricksters. They somehow managed to annoy him, and that was frustrating. His social life was getting better, too. He still didn't have many friends, but he sometimes went out with Shikamaru and Chaoji. It was nice company, where Shikamaru sometimes would challenge him to a shogi game, and Chaoji would challenge him to an eating contest. Both of these boys knew Naruto was only acting as an idiot, but they promised to keep it a secret, understanding the reasons there were cases when some people gave him an evil look if Naruto performed better than others. In the academy, Naruto would sometimes even talk with Sasuke, who sat next to him. The guy seemed to be okay, but he had some social problems. Naruto couldn't find out why exactly. About the academy. Now, with Mizuki's death, a new assistant had been assigned to Aruka. Her name was Kurunai Yuhi, and she was a really beautiful woman. Kurunai had long, black, shoulder-length hair and very unique eyes that are red in color. She wore makeup consisting of red lipstick and purple eyeshadow. Her regular outfit consisted of a red mesh armor blouse with only the right sleeve visible. Over the blouse is a very broad material which resembled bandages with a pattern on it, similar to those of rose thorns. Her hands and upper thighs are also wrapped in bandages, and she wore the Kanoha Hit I-8 and regular shinobi sandals. Her and I will assist Aruka for a year before she will go and try for the Jounin exams. As she said, she needed some experience with kids if she wanted to take a genin team. And she was a better teacher than Mizuki ever was anyway. Also, when she saw the fangirls, she became furious with them. They were a disgrace to Kanoichi, female ninja. That day she asked Aruka for a separate room and asked all the girls to come. There she told them about real Kanoichi life about how men look down upon them, about the possibilities of rape and death. She told them that without any skills, they will die on their first real mission and that they will be the cause of their teammates' deaths because of their weakness. She also told them that going on diets and running around worshipping Sasuke will not make them better or stronger. One girl tried to protest, saying how great her Sasuke Kun was and will always protect her. Gurunai became so angry, she cast the weakest Jinjutsu, where Sasuke was being beaten up on the girl and threw her out of the academy, of course, with Aruka's approval. She said to girls. You better quit the academy now, rather than continue this fangirlism, because if you die and take your teammates with you, no one will be sorry for you. Instead, everyone will think how weak and pathetic you were to drag your teammates down with you. If I will ever see any fangirlism again, I will make sure you're kicked out of here. But that, everything changed. The boys could see that most of the girls started to become serious about being ninja. Sakura and Ino were examples of this their grades became better and they sometimes put more effort into their physical training. Both of them still loved Sasuke but now they didn't show it so much, which Sasuke was grateful for. Some of the girls weren't impressed with Kurunai's speech and continued to fawn over their Sasuke-kun, but after some days, they never came back to school. And lastly, the villagers. 
Naruto didn't know why, but it was a bit more pleasant to walk on the streets. There were still many who gave him a dark glare of hate, but there also appeared some people who gave him a look of disbelief, sympathy, recognition and respect. Those were mostly of ninja families. Naruto never approached them to ask about their looks, and the people never approached him, either. Naruto still couldn't understand the reason for these looks. Naruto let out a sigh and went to his apartment. It was already late and tomorrow's a new week, meaning another boring lecture. Geez, he already knew everything the academy was teaching hell no, he knew more than a fresh genin would know. Time skip. One week. In the Hokage's office, Hamura and Kaharu, two Kanoha council elders and the Hokage's advisors, along with Hiruzen, were listening to Itachi's report. Itachi was a double agent. He was spying for the Ichiha clan by gathering various information from the council and shinobi activities towards their clan, as well as being a spy for the Hokage within the Ichiha clan. Itachi was a very loyal shinobi and loved Kanoha more than his clan, and that was the reason why Itachi said everything he knew. And these are really troubling reports, Itachi. Are you sure they are correct? Asked the old Hokage as Itachi finished his report. Yes, Hokage-sama. The Ichiha are planning a coup d'etat. They say the village doesn't respect them the way they should and that they don't receive the power they deserve, Itachi let out a sigh before continuing their attitude sometimes sickens me. Their arrogance has gone beyond normal. What will you do about it, Hiruzen? Hamura asked. Call the Ichiha clan head here I will speak with Yugaku and try to resolve it peacefully, the Hokage answered. He really didn't like the situation and he didn't believe peace talks will do any good any longer. You can't really believe that will work, can you? Kaharu asked skeptically. What else do you suggest? Slaughter an entire clan. Questions may arise and if the truth leaks out to the public, a civil war may start and that's exactly what I don't want to happen more lives to be lost, the Hokage tried to reason. True, but what if one ninja could kill an entire clan and then is marked as a missing nin? I think that's a good idea, don't you think so, Hamura? Kaharu asked, ignoring the look of disbelief on Itachi's face. That is an option, but who will be foolish enough to sacrifice everything they achieve just for the sake of the village? Hamura replied besides, who is powerful and skillful enough to slaughter an entire Ichiha clan? There was a moment of silence. In this moment Itachi thought about his life in the village, his clan, brother and many other things. Gathering his resolve and courage, he volunteered. I will do it. I will become a missing nin in order to protect this village. The Ichiha have been causing too much trouble, and a coup d'etat is the last straw, trying my patience. The Ichiha should have been honorable and be a prime example of what ninja should be like. But instead, they've sank in their own arrogance, the quality of Ichiha ninja has fallen, because they rely only on the Sharingan. It's a shame to be in their clan, Itachi said with strong resolve. Basically, the Hokage and the two elders were shocked at Itachi's volunteering and his reasons. Itachi was their strongest shinobi, and it seemed he was also the most loyal. It was also surprising to see such emotions in him. But you're our best shinobi. We can't lose you, Hamura tried to reason. It doesn't matter. There's no one else who could efficiently kill an entire clan and come out alive. Furthermore, when I become a missing nin, I can protect the village from the outside. I will always be a loyal nin of the village, and I will protect it when the need will arise. All three elders smiled sadly. Itachi was such a good ninja at such a young age. But they really didn't have any choice. It seems we don't have a choice, Kaharu said as she let out a sigh, we won't have any Sharingan users left in the village. It will cripple our military force. Letting them stay alive will cripple our force even more if the Ichiha will create a civil war to overthrow Hokage-sama. But I have a solution. I will keep my brother, Sasuke, alive. Itachi answered. Are you sure it's a good idea? After seeing what happened to his clan, he will seek revenge. He would leave the village at any chance to get more power and would live in hatred. This situation is too familiar to me just like the case with Orochimaru, the old Hokage sadly said. At the mention of the snake Sanin, everyone winced, except for Itachi who kept an indifferent face. I will make sure he stays in the village for the right reasons and would not betray it. But there's a favor I will have to ask of you, Itachi said. Seeing the interested faces of the elders, he continued do not spoil him. He will be the last Ichiha, and people would offer him any help free jutsu scrolls, free food, anything. If that happens, he will get arrogant just like the rest of the clan. Now he is pure and I've made sure he stayed like that so far. Thank Kami father couldn't influence him. As you wish, Itachi, I'll make sure Sasuke-kun won't be spoiled. When you will execute the plan? Hokage asked. Tonight. The sooner, the better. Good luck Itachi. And thank you for your sacrifice. Of course, Hokage-sama. That night. It was a deep night in Kanoha, the full moon illuminating the streets, giving some light to those who stayed late outside. It was also one of those rare full moons which gave creepiness to the air. Ichiha Sasuke was one of the few who weren't asleep now. 
He was returning home from the nearby woods where he spent his day training, but he lost track of time and stayed there until now. As he got closer to Achiha district, something felt off to him. He couldn't tell what exactly, but something definitely was wrong. He ran. Soon, he reached the gates. Usually there would be two gate guards, but today there were none. Also, Sasuk felt a strange scent in the air. He didn't know it, but it was scent of the blood. He entered the streets of the district and froze. There were countless bodies laying in puddles of blood, and sometimes you could even see some insides and gore on the streets. All of them were dead. All of them. Sasuke noticed they were from Ichiha. Oh Kami, what the hell happened here? He muttered. Then he realized something to San, Nai San. He feared they died as well, so Sasuke hurried back home, ignoring all the bodies. Tears started to form in his eyes as he ran Nai San, please don't die. Don't leave me alone. He entered his house and noticed the lights were off and it was too quiet. Maybe they're just sleeping, he hoped. What an innocent wish. He ran towards father's room to check on him. As he entered, he saw something what he will always remember. There was Itachi standing, his tanto stuck in Fugaku's chest, and his bloody clothes had some scratches. When Itachi pulled his tanto out, Fugaku's body fell to ground limp and lifeless. Itachi heard someone enter the room and he was ready to strike again, until he saw it was his younger brother. He sheathed his tanto and walked towards Sasuke with a small smile, which was very rare for Itachi. Sasuke Itachi started, but was interrupted. W.Y., Nai-san. W.Y. Why did did UK kill everyone? Sasuke asked, as he backed away from Itachi until finally reaching a wall. He looked into Itachi's eyes and gasped they looked like never before. His eyes looked like Sharingan, but it was a bit different. Red eyes with some kind of pinwheel or shuriken in it. A hey, and what's with why your eyes? Itachi stopped and looked into Sasuke's eyes. I'm sorry, Atoto, but it had to be done. For the sake of the village. Sake of the V village. What are you talking about? Itachi sighed. It will not be easy. Sorry, but I can't tell you. Can you answer one my question? Sasuke nodded. But he nodded because he was afraid, not because he wanted to answer his question. Do not fear me, Sasuke. I would never harm you, you're too precious to me, just like this village. Tell me, do you have any precious things or people that you love and would protect until your very last breath? Sasuke didn't fully understand the question, but he tried to answer precious people. Who I love. W well it would be you, Itachi and I would like to protect you, but you're strong enough so you don't need my protection. Itachi smiled. It was one of those rare true smiles. Thanks Itoto. But what about the village? Do you love the village and would you like to protect it as well? Well, I guess so. I'm born here and I live here after all. I see. Remember this, Sasuke. Do not hate me nor the village, find friends here, create bonds. Friendship and a wish to protect those precious to you will make you truly strong. I have given you freedom from your father, so you don't have to be afraid to make friends. Follow my footsteps become strong, don't be arrogant, train really hard and don't rely just on the Sharingan. And protect this village, just like I did. Today, I protected my friends, village and most importantly my family, from the harm of the Achiha clan. When you get older, I will answer your questions, but for now, live a happy life and rebuild the Achiha clan to its former glory, where all the members have a high sense of honor. Do not seek me, but know this, I will always love and protect you wherever you may be. Farewell, my foolish little brother. Tsukiyomi. Itachi said. The last thing Sasuke saw was a single tear coming from Itachi's eyes. Then, the world shifted to black and white with a red moon casting a red light throughout the place, creating a cloudy atmosphere with a red background. Tsukiyomi whirled. Suddenly, Kanoha appeared in the distance. Sasuke ran towards it, hoping to talk to his brother again or to get some help from the other ninjas. When he reached the gates, a sudden explosion was heard in the village. Within the seconds, all the village was aflame. No, Sasuke muttered as he backed away from the village, no 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 no, what the hell? Help. He shouted in true horror. He then turned away and ran in opposite direction until he somehow reappeared in his academy class. Hey emo. You're late. Naruto shouted. Sasuke, what happened? It's the first time you're late to academy, Iruka asked. Sasuke couldn't believe he is here he just saw the village burn, but nonetheless he was relieved to see them. Iruka sensei The village is burning. What? Don't talk nonsense. Go and sit in your place, Iruka said, a bit angry. Sasuke wanted to protest, but he couldn't because he saw a giant spear shot out from Iruka's chest, with his heart at the end, which was still beating until it stopped. Sasuke screamed in true horror. His own heart started to beat faster, and he barely could stand on his legs. He turned his head and saw how his classmates didn't even notice it. He looked at Shikamaru, who was peacefully sleeping, when suddenly Shikamaru started to scream and burn in white flames, until nothing but ash remained. Still, no one noticed it. 
He glanced at Ino who was arguing with Sakura when suddenly she exploded into blood and gore. Sasuke let out a scream and fell on his knees. He quickly looked at Naruto who was making another prank. As he set his eyes on Naruto, the blonde was impaled by a metal spear out of nowhere, just like Aruka. Sasuke screamed again and again for the next 10 hours everywhere he looked, he saw death. But then he realized something. It was more painful to watch them die than seeing his clan members dead. Is that what Itachi meant by precious people? He shut his eyes and felt a bit relaxed. Real world. Roughly two seconds has passed in the real world. Itachi saw Sasuke's eyes snap open. Itachi was relieved that his plan worked. Sasuke's eyes changed they now had red iris, black pupil and one tomo in each eye around the pupil. Itachi managed to awaken Sasuke Sharingan by giving him high emotional pain, although Itachi tried to not be so rough so that Sasuke wouldn't have any mental damage, he still succeeded. Furthermore, he killed two birds with one stone, not only did he awaken Sasuke Sharingan, he also showed what he meant by precious people. I'm sorry, Sasuke, for doing this, but remember what did I told you, Itachi said. He quickly approached Sasuke and poked his forehead with his index and middle fingers. With that, Sasuke fell to the ground unconscious, and the last thing he saw was Itachi's smile. But before Sasuke could touch the ground, Itachi caught him and gently placed him on the ground. Then Itachi quickly checked his supplies and got the items he was missing from the various houses in the compound. He still had some time before other ninja would arrive. He quickly created a cage bunshin and sent it to the safest exit in the village. Meanwhile, the real Itachi went the opposite direction of the clone, to the village gates. Every 15 meters he would cast a strong and wide area of effect Jinjutsu, so no one could see him. After a while, he finally reached the gates. He looked at the village for one last time before leaving. He would wander the elemental nations, gather various information and protect his village from the outside. Just like one Jiraiya-sama did. With clone. When the clone finally reached the Ichiha district's east wall, he climbed over it without fear of being detected. On the other side there was a man waiting for him. The man wore a black coat with red clouds on it and an orange spiraling mask. So, how was it? The man asked. Everything was okay. No one saw me, Itachi answered. Great, now you're officially a member of Akatsuki. Here's your coat and a ring. The masked man said and gave Itachi both belongings. Itachi didn't accept them though. No. I'm not joining your criminal organization. I know you're not Madara Ichiha as you state. And don't even bother trying to find me because it will be proven to be difficult if not impossible. I'm already gone, he said and poofed out of existence. The masked man was seething with anger. He was tricked so easily. Itachi said he will join them only so he wouldn't be interrupted from anything he was doing. The man tried to find the smallest trace of Itachi's chakra, but as Itachi said, it was impossible. You will regret this, Itachi, the man said, as he disappeared in swirl of vortex which came from his right eye. Four days have passed since the massacre, and Sasuke finally was released from the hospital. He couldn't remember how or who had taken him to the hospital, but he didn't really care. He entered the Ichiha compound and noticed that the streets were clean, without any blood or bodies. I guess the Hokage ordered the clean up here. Sasuke muttered. He continued his way up the street and tried to ignore all the memories of that night until he finally reached his house. He hesitated to enter, but eventually he did. He walked up the stairs and approached his room. There, on the bedtime table, was a piece of paper, something was written on it. Sasuke took it and read. Toto, I'm sorry. I didn't want you to see what you saw, but I had no choice. It was my parting gift. Everything you saw that night, even the Jinjutsu in the end yes it was a Jinjutsu was to awaken your Sharingan. You're now a full member of the Ichiha clan. Please don't hate me or the village or anyone else. Remember what I've told you. Make me proud and protect the village and your friends. When the time comes, I will tell you everything. Here, on this table I've left some pills and a key. The key is from our clan library, where various scrolls on Nin, Taijen and Kinjutsu are stored. The pills are to heal the mental damage I caused when I cast that Jinjutsu on you. It will also help you forget that night. Tsunade Sama, one of the Sanin, herself made them. She says the ingredients for these pills are very rare and are to be used only in emergency, and now is the emergency, so take them. Take care Sasuke. I love you. You're nice and... Itachi. When Sasuke finished reading, he smiled. That night he thought Itachi had turned into an emotionless murderer, but that wasn't the case. He took the pills and he felt how the headache began to fade. Sasuke then decided to see what's in the library, maybe he would pick up something interesting and train. He didn't have anything better to do anyway. Time skip. Two weeks. Naruto was trying to find Sasuke. The only problem was that he didn't know where to look for him, so he just wandered the village aimlessly in the hope of finding him. The reason he wanted to find him was just to talk. Everyone knew about the Ichiha massacre. 
Sasuke was now alone, without a family, even without friends, and he couldn't understand why Sasuke never tried to make friends, but he guessed it had something to do with the Ichiha arrogance and pride. Still, Naruto knew how it was to be alone, and he just wanted to help his classmate. Maybe they will finally become friends, seeing as how they shared the same situation. After two hours of searching, he subconsciously reached the Ichiha district's lake. He couldn't even remember how he came here, it looked like he had spaced out while walking around the village. It was a beautiful place, though. Various flora surrounded the lake. It would be fascinating to see sunset here. The lake was pretty big. There also was a footbridge that reached one mile into the lake. At the end of the bridge was a lonely figure sitting, it's his feet in the water. Naruto sighed. He finally found the person he was looking for. After five minutes of slight jogging he finally reached Sasuke. He heard how he was panting a little. As he finally reached him, he shouted hey emo. Sasuke didn't even need to turn around to see who was calling for him. Only one person called him emo. I'm not emo, dope. What do you want? Well, you act like an emo. I just wanted to see how are you doing after what happened. You seem more distant than before, Naruto said. He always cared for his classmates, especially after the incident with Mizuki. Even for an emo like Sasuke. I'm fine. Now, leave me alone, Sasuke shot back. It was still painful for him to talk about that night. He felt better about it after he took the pills, but it was still sore subject for him. Geez, Sasuke. If you continue to act that way, you will feel worse than now, Naruto said seriously. He didn't want anyone to feel what he felt total loneliness. What would you know? You don't know how it is to lose your family. Yours is still Al he then stopped. He remembered that Naruto didn't have parents at all. Naruto even didn't know who they were or how they looked like. No one knew, but Sasuke didn't like to make people feel bad if they didn't have family. Sorry. I forgot. It's okay, Sasuke. I've already accepted that fact, he paused for a second, thinking of his next words, Sasuke, you're right, Sasuke turned around and looked at him curiously Naruto almost never acknowledged him. Naruto continued I don't know how it is to lose family. But I do know how it is to be alone. I know how it is to be without loved ones, friends or family. I know how it is to go home, knowing that no one is waiting for you. I know the loneliness, Sasuke. You can't image how it is to live like that for nine years. But unlike you, Sasuke, I was also hated and despised. I don't even want to remember my past because there was a period when I wanted to hurt everyone who hurt me. I even wanted to die or run away from the village. But then I entered the academy. But even there I couldn't make friends because parents told their children to stay away from one Naruto Uzumaki. Then I started to do pranks just to be noticed. Until the trip. There, I finally befriended Shikamaru and Choji. And I even got to know you a little, although you still seem distant. I guess it was a Chiha pride and arrogance. There, when Mizuki betrayed us, I was afraid for everyone. I didn't want them to be hurt. My wish was to protect them to protect my precious people Aruka-sensei, who is like an older brother to me and my new friends, I then awakened my power. It was me who saved everyone that day. Sasuke, if you continue to ignore everyone and stay alone, you will go mad. One day, you will just turn your back on the village and do something wrong. I don't really think it's something you would like to do or any of your family would like you to do. With his speech finished, he put his hands behind his head in a relaxed manner, turned around and slowly started to walk away. He really hoped his words would reach Sasuke. Sasuke was shocked by Naruto's speech. Naruto was supposed to be an idiot and here he was hearing such words from him. He was shocked to hear how Naruto felt in the past, although he partly knew his past. And again, he was shocked because Itachi had told him very similar words. That's stronger by protecting your precious people. Make friends. Loneliness. And what was that power Naruto told him about? He thought maybe Itachi was right. He will give it a shot. He will try to make friends. Maybe it will help him to forget that night, maybe what Naruto said about hurting someone out of loneliness was true, maybe he will get stronger by making bonds. Too many maybes. He decided to try. And he will start today, with Naruto. After all, Naruto was the only one he had talked to the most. And who knew loneliness? Naruto wait, Sasu called out. Naruto stopped and turned his head, curious about what the emo wanted now. He didn't believe his words reached him that fast. Yes. I, I was afraid to make friends Sasuke muttered. Naruto barely heard him. Huh? Afraid? Why? Naruto asked, now fully turning and facing the still sitting Sasuke. I wanted to make friends, but I was afraid of my father. My clan was not how it used to be. In the past, the Ichiha clan was noble, powerful and had a sense of honor. But now, they wanted more power, wealth and whatsoever. The Ichiha were now so arrogant. I, I wanted to make friends, wanted to be like everyone else, but my father told me not to make contact with low-class people. 
he said that other than the Hayuga, no one was worth our time, and interacting with low-class people in a friendly manner was beneath us, he said it was a disgrace to our clan. I really didn't believe him, but my brother, Itachi he said not to fear my father and to make friends, but I was afraid. My father was a powerful man, and he had a short temper. And I didn't want to bring shame to my clan. Sasuke explained. This was the first time he had ever told anyone about that. It felt somehow relieving. So that's why Sasuke was so cold to everyone. Now he finally understood. Well, that's just plain stupid. Look at what happened to them, they died of their own arrogance. For some reason I've never liked the Ichiha anyway, seeing the sad look on Sasuke's face, he thought he said something wrong. Uh, sorry. No, it's okay. I agree with you. I didn't like the clan either. Actually, I'm kind of happy they are dead, seeing Naruto's surprised look, he elaborated as he stood up, now I'm finally free. I can do what I want. As if a cage has been opened. And I don't have to be afraid anymore. You know my brother was the one who killed the entire clan. He did that to make me free, Itachi did it for me. He said almost the same words you said to me. But that wasn't enough for me. Thanks Naruto. Hearing about your past made me realize Itachi told the truth. That's why I will try to be more friendly. Naruto was quite surprised that the Ichiha's prodigy would do something like that, he had heard about Itachi, but seeing how he did it for his little brother, he smiled sadly, knowing that no one would do something like that for him. Naruto then saw Sasuke stretch out his hand. Hey, dope. What do you say about us being friends? I figured we could be friends, because you're the one I've talked to the most. Um I hope that's a good reason, Sasuke said, worried a bit. He hoped he had made a good reason. Also, he had seen how people shake hands when they meet. Naruto looked at Sasuke with a deadpan expression, but he still took Sasuke's hand and shook it. He said Sasuke, of course I'll be your friend. But you don't need any reasons to be friends with someone. You just need to be friendly, talk with people, and they will eventually become your friends. You won't even notice it. Well, I'm not a professional, but I learned that much during my time with Shikamaru and Chaoji. Sasuke blushed a bit. He couldn't believe he did something like that. At least it wasn't in public, and Naruto wasn't laughing about Sasuke's inexperience with interacting with people his age. Anyway, what were you up to? When I came here, I heard you panting, Naruto asked as he let go of Sasuke's hand. He was happy that he made yet another friend. Sasuke couldn't decide whether tell him or not. He decided to tell him because he heard how friendship relied on trusting each other. Also, he had heard in the classroom how others talked about small things like this what did you do yesterday? What are your plans for tomorrow? Etc. Well, I was practicing my new jutsu here. Usually the Ichiha practice their fire jutsu here. Sasuke answered. Wow. You two train outside of the academy? Oh, I guess everyone from the clan does so. Can you show it to me, please? Naruto pleaded. Sasuke thought about it a little he felt a bit exhausted, but he had regained some chakra while talking to Naruto. Well, he could try the last time for today. Sure. Sasuke turned his back to Naruto, facing the lake. He did some hand seals, stopping on the tiger seal. He inhaled a large amount of air and exhaled while shouting Katen. Nkakak no jutsu a medium-sized ball of fire shot out from Sasuke's mouth and flew forward. After half a mile, the fireball dispersed. Sasuke was holding his knees, bent forward and panted heavily. It was the last chakra he could use for today without fainting from chakra exhaustion. After the entire day he couldn't improve, every time one and the same result. And there was no one who could tell what his problem was. Not bad, Sasuke, Naruto said. Sasuke turned around. He wanted to ask Naruto to elaborate what did he meant by not bad. Surely, Naruto couldn't do better. But what he saw made his jaw drop. Then Naruto why your eyes, Sasuke muttered between the panting. Sasuke was staring into Naruto's rinnegan. Huh? Oh. You remember when I told you about the power I awakened on the trip? After receiving short nod from Sasuke, he continued well, I awakened the rinnegan. Our rinnegan. But it's just a myth. Well it was. I won't bother to tell you everything about it now, maybe later. Anyway, I activated my dejutsu to see how much chakra you used for your jutsu. You used enough chakra to make the fireball that big, but you had very little control to keep it burning. That's why the fireball disappears so quickly. Sasuke, now regained his breath, stood up and said HN. If you could do better. Naruto just smirked. Well, Sasuke, I surely can. Then show me. There's no one better in Katen Jutsus than the Achea. And here comes the Ichiha arrogance he muttered as he switched places with Sasuke. He did the same hand seals, stopped on Tiger, inhaled and exhaled as he shouted Katen. Ao no Gnkakak no Jutsu, blue grand fireball technique. A large blue fireball shot from his mouth. It flew forwards until it reached the opposite wall and exploded in blue and red flames. Sasuke was staring at Naruto with wide eyes. 
Not only had he made a perfect grand fireball jutsu, he also made it quite powerful. Also, he was shocked Naruto, the dead last of the class, performed an actual Kaiten jutsu, as well as making the flame blue. H how? Was the only thing Sasu could ask. Naruto just turned around and tilted his head in confusion. What do you mean how? Regaining composure from his shock, Sasu continued, how the dead last make such a big, perfect and powerful fireball jutsu. And why was it blue? Naruto grinned. Heh, Sasuke, that's the result of hard work. And I'm dead last only in the academy. Remember, deception is a ninja's greatest tool. As to why it is blue, it's because of my chakra. My chakra is much more potent and dense than others have, and it also is in a different color. You see, everyone has blue chakra, while mine is silver with blue tint. Basically, it's a simple mkakak, but because mine is blue I renamed it to the blue mkakak. It kind of made sense. But why is your chakra different? Long story short my dejutsu and some other conditions. And that's one of the few jutsu I've mastered. Naruto said, without revealing too much. Anyway, if you want I can help you with your jutsu. Sasuke didn't want to accept his help because his pride wouldn't allow him to, he was in a chair. But then he remembered how some people in academy helped each other out. Was this what friends did help each other out? Besides, he really needed the help. He didn't want to say it, but he eventually did I I guess I would need some help from a person who has mastered the jutsu. Naruto grinned. That's great. Hey Sasuke, maybe we should train together? What do you mean? He asked curiously. Well, I don't have anything to do after the academy, so I just train for the rest of the day. I've been doing this for a year now. I think now you will have more time as well. Maybe we could train together. I mean, we could spar teach each other something. And we could help each other with our dejutsu. It will also be more fun to train together than with clones, Naruto said. Sasu thought about it. He had to admit it was a nice idea. First of all, he could become stronger, secondly he could see how strong Naruto truly is, thirdly he could train his dejutsu and lastly, he could learn something on how to interact with other kids his age. He really lacked that knowledge. He wasn't shy, it's just that he didn't know how to properly do things. He was a bit confused with clones bit, but he figured it was some kind of Naruto weirdness, since clones are not solid. I guess we could. Let's come to my training grounds tomorrow. No one could see us training, and I like the idea of that deception thing, I will have to remember that, Sasuke said. Okay then. See you tomorrow, Emo. Oh and by the way. Continue to act as you did, just don't be so cold to everyone. Naruto said. And with that, he left. Sasuke wondered where this friendship will lead him, but he had a feeling he chose the right thing to do. After some time, he went home as well. Some weeks have passed since Naruto and Sasuke became friends. In a brief amount of time, they quickly became best friends. In class, they still acted as before, though Sasuke wasn't so cold anymore. He talked more. Other kids noticed that as well. Especially the fangirls who started to worship him again and ask for dates. Well, it was their fault they got kicked out of the academy. Then, there was a day when Naruto managed to convince Sasuke to go out with him, Shikamaru and Choji. At the beginning, Shikamaru didn't want Sasuke to come because he thought he will ruin the day with his attitude, but when Naruto explained Sasuke's situation without revealing too much, he agreed. Sasuke felt somehow uneasy with others around. In the academy it was one thing where everyone spent their time learning new things. But going out with friends during free time was a completely new experience to him. He did things he would never do alone, like playing some games and enjoying their time in the park. That was the first time in his life he felt just like an ordinary nine-year-old kid. Shikamaru and Choji didn't mind his company, seeing as how Sasuke tried to make friends. Also, Sasuke was quite shocked to see Naruto's way of training. When Naruto explained him the cage bunshin training, he wondered if he could do the same training, but Naruto said he couldn't. Naruto explained about why it was a kinjutsu and that only he could do this training. When Sasuke asked why only he could, Naruto explained about his massive reserves of chakra and enhanced healing. He didn't tell him about Kaiubi, though. Yet. That was the day Sasuke swore he would train hard to become as strong as his brother and his new best friend, Naruto. That was the day when Naruto became not only his best friend, but his rival as well. And somehow, Sasuke just forgot to ask where he learned Cage Bunshin in the first place. Naruto also found out about his left eye's ability. He discovered it in the library when he was reading a scroll on some Doton technique. His clone accidentally, Naruto still didn't know how this accident happened, activated the Rinnegan. The clone then subconsciously started to focus on the written text and images and noticed that he now faster and the text seemed clearer and more understandable. Then the other clone who was nearby saw his left eye slit slowly spinning. The next day, when Naruto wanted to go through everything the clone read, he was surprised because he remembered everything. 
Every single word and every single image, even every single detail on the image. After a day or two Kai Ubi explained to him about this new ability. Basically, Naruto now could copy and understand texts. Naruto thought it was stupid, but Kai Ubi elaborated Naruto now didn't have to send 20 clones to the ninjutsu section, one clone was enough. That clone would activate his Rinnegan and scan the needed scrolls which would forever be copied to his memory. Then, he could use that memory to train in his ninjutsu. Long story short he now needed much less clones and time to read new scrolls. The only downside was that only one clone at a time could activate the Rinnegan and this ability. Also, there was a limit on how much he could copy in one day. That was also the day when Kai Ubi added Fuinjutsu training to the schedule, explaining that this ability and Fuinjutsu are just meant to be great together. Anyway, today was a Saturday afternoon, and you could find Naruto and Sasuke sitting in Ichirakus and eating ramen. Well, Sasuke had just finished his bowl, and Naruto was already eating his fourth. Oh, where is all that food going? It's like you've got black hole instead of a stomach or something, Sasuke said. He still was calling him dope. It was the way Sasuke showed him respect because being dead last and stronger than Sasuke was not a small feat, well, you can argue about that being respect. Also, it was a way to annoy Naruto. And to annoy Sasuke, Naruto continued to call him emo, although he didn't act like one anymore. Not much anyway. Emo, this is food from Kami herself. I just can't eat less, Naruto answered. Sasuke just sighed. Raymond was okay, although he wasn't fan of it. So, why did you call me today here? I was hoping to stay and then read some scrolls or just relax, Sasuke asked. Naruto finished his bowl, said thanks and paid to the old man. He turned to Sasuke with a serious expression and said you know Sasuke, we've been friends and trained together for some weeks. We even worked on one collaboration technique, and our teamwork is nice. We haven't worked on that, but it's nice, Naruto then paused. Sasuke still couldn't understand where Naruto is going with this. He knew Naruto long enough to know that, sometimes, he had some crazy ideas. Naruto continued well, do you want to be on one team with me when we become genin? Well, it wasn't as crazy as Sasuke was expecting. And it was a nice idea too. They were both strongest in their class and they worked well together. He had an addition to this idea it's a nice idea, but I've got better. Well, that made Naruto interested. Oh yeah. And what would that be? How about we find one more person, he trains with us, and then we three become a team once we are made genin. Sasuke suggested. Just imagine our team would be the strongest among the genins. Everyone would think we're some kind of fresh rookies, when actually we could kick some serious ass. We would storm through ranks, and no one would know what hit him. That was one of the aspects of Sasuke's personality. He really liked to kick some ass and show how strong he was. But still, it was a great plan. That's great Sasuke. But there's a problem. HN. What is it? Sasuke asked. The third member of the team has to be a girl, Naruto said. He knew Sasuke hated fangirls, and all girls in the class liked Sasuke, except for one shy pale-eyed, short-haired girl. Wink wink nod nod dot. Oh great although Kurunai-sensei did a great job making the girls take the right path, still all of them are worshipping me. I like my plan anyway so I will need to deal with it. Maybe after some time with us, the girl will take being a Kanoichi seriously. Are you sure about a girl being the third member? Sasuke said, a bit sad. He really didn't want to deal with a fangirl, but if it meant being able to kick some ass, he would cope with that. Yes. I've read that they put the kid with best overall score with a dead last, and because there are three ninja on a squad, they add in the best academic on the team, which usually is a girl, Naruto answered. Sasuke sighed. I see. Do you have any suggestions? Well, yeah. There are three girls which I could suggest to add to our team. Hinata, Ino and Sakura, answering the unspoken question, Naruto explained, all three of them come from a ninja family, where Ino and Hinata are from clans. We can cross out Hinata, because. First, she is too shy and unsure of herself, she almost doesn't have any self-confidence. Secondly, she is a high uga, meaning that her parents won't allow her to be with an Ichiha, he finished as he took some moments to regain his breath. Sasuke just nodded, agreeing to the explanation. What about the other two? Ino, she comes from good clan and she is average at all subjects. She also has nice clan jutsus which I'm sure you know something about. But I don't think she will be good for our team because of her personality. Though I wouldn't mind her, it's most likely she will be with Shikamaru and Choji, just like their parents were. So I guess we can cross her out as well, he sighed. He somehow liked Ino, but she already had a crush on Sasuke. Naruto then continued then there comes Sakura. She is not very good at all subjects, but she has good book smarts. I mean, she is the smartest girl of the class. Sakura has a bit less than average grades on physical subjects. She is decent with Bunshin, Kawarimi and good at detecting and dispelling Jinjutsu. 
She has low chakra reserves, but very good chakra control. That's everything I could find out about them from observing in class. She doesn't come from any clan, but her father was a ninja, and her mother is a civilian, Naruto finished. Sasuke was quite surprised about Naruto's information gathering just from observing. He didn't know though that it was one of the requests from Kaiubi to see how Naruto would succeed. So basically our chances with Sakura is better than with Ino. Sasuke said. You could barely notice the smile on his lips, but of course it didn't go unnoticed by Naruto. Yeah and I think it's our best option. She is not as loud and bossy as Ino is. Also, I feel she has some kind of hidden power, Naruto said. And of course he didn't mention that it was Kaiubi who sensed some kind of hidden power in the girl, but Sasuke didn't need to know that for now. HN? Hidden power? What do you mean? Sasuke asked. Well I'm not sure, but you better believe me. I think she has some kind of hidden bloodline or something like that. I think Sakura would be an interesting addition to our team. And I'm sure you would like it, Naruto said with a smirk. What do you mean? Oh, don't give me that crap. I've seen how you look at her in class sometimes. So you like one of your fangirls after all, Emo? Naruto said in teasing voice. Sasuke barely blushed as he shouted shut up, dope, it's not true. I just like pink color. She is weak and I only like strong and determined girls. Yeah, right. Isn't she determined enough to be your girlfriend? I think that's enough determination, Naruto countered. He enjoyed the small twitch in Sasuke's eyebrow. And what about you? I've seen how you look at Ino sometimes. What about her? Don't you want her on our team? Sasuke asked. He thought it was a good counter for Naruto, but that wasn't the case. Naruto shrugged well, at least I'm not shy to admit I somehow like her. And yes, I would like her on our team, but it won't work. First, because she is way too bossy, and her fangirlism will be harder to cure. Sasuke sighed. Naruto was almost always calm, and it was hard to get under his skin, almost just like Itachi. But he had a point about Ino. Sakura was their only choice. Plus, he was intrigued by this hidden power Naruto spoke of. Although he didn't like fangirls, he would give Sakura a chance. And that's only because she had a pink hair fine then. Shall we approach her on Monday? Yes. The sooner, the better, Naruto said. Okay then, see you on Monday, dope. See ya, emo. And with that, they left to their separate homes.